you there? What? Dad? What's going on here? Dad? The door was wide open, chaos all over the place, and my father has vanished without a trace. I hope nothing has happened to him. I'd better start looking for him. My father was never the picture of organization, but not even my place looks this bad. The map shows a section of Siberia. No idea why my father hung it up here. All these files and records have been thrown out over the floor. It wouldn't have been Daddy. Someone was in a great hurry to find something. The note says, and the prince said to the princess, whether vertical, horizontal, or in both main diagonals, make sure that there is never a repeat within a line. Hmm. Does that have something to do with the coins? An award from the Russian Academy of Science. I think that was for an expedition that my father made in the 50s or 60s. A picture of my parents' wedding. I think Dad still hasn't gotten over her death. The radiator is lukewarm. You can use the valve as needed to release the air from the radiator. If I turn the valve now, I'll ruin the whole floor. The frame and glass are totally shattered, and the photo has been torn in half. A photo of Daddy on one of his expeditions Written on the back is 1958, Vladimir Kalenkov, and I've seen the photo before. But who was the other guy in the photo? And why was the photo torn up? I'll glue it into my diary. It might be important somehow. Looks like something has been embedded in that stone. It has a red-violet glow. I think this is where the rock samples undergo the first analysis. I haven't the faintest clue how this thing is supposed to work. The inside of the dish is somewhat porous. A glass flask. A glass flask. Looks like something has been embedded in that stone. It has a red-violet glow. Instead of finding out what is locked inside the stone, I now have it encased in a bit of glass. The phone in the office. Private conversations are strictly prohibited. I don't know what's happened here, but I'd better call the police. Berlin Police Department. Hello? Nina Kalinkov here. You've got to send someone here right away. My father has disappeared without a trace. Since when? No idea. I wanted to see him at work, but he wasn't there. Instead, the place looks like it's been ransacked. Is your father suicidal or mentally unstable? What? No, of course not. Sorry, we can't do anything then. 
Adults can only be reported missing if their lives are in danger or if there are extraordinary circumstances. But this is an extraordinary circumstance. Keep calm. I'm sure your father had something important to take care of and we'll get in touch soon. Don't worry. Something important to take care of? Hello? Did you listen to anything I said? It looks like there was an earthquake here. Do you think he created this chaos himself and is looking for a cleaning lady right now? Like I said, I can't do anything for you. Sorry. Great. Thanks for nothing. You are a big help. What do I have to do? Send them two fingers first for them to get their butts in gear? Loud music? Coming out of the office? It's not the stuff Daddy listens to, so he can't be in there. Maybe the person in there can tell me where he is, though. The door seems to be blocked from the inside, and the music coming from the room is so loud, my knocking probably can't be heard. There's an index card with Max Gruber written on it. An aloe vera plant for skin after 40. They must have taken the real nameplate down during the renovation work. And now there is an index card with daddy's name on it. A list of local pizza delivery services Information about the upcoming construction of an antenna tower in the neighborhood. A guy by the name of Schamberger whose dog Whiskey is missing. As far as I can tell, nothing interesting. I take it the fuses are in here. This one's locked. It burbles quietly. King of the dinosaurs. Even the reproductions inspire fear. I certainly wouldn't want to run into one of them. That's an escape plan with all of the rooms in the museum. It's not up to date considering a few of the rooms have been blocked off for renovation. On this list are the names of the employees of the museum. Scientific Director, Vladimir Kalenko, Office 5. In Office 4, there is this Max Gruber. I hear noises coming from the statue. It looks like someone's in there. Hmm. There's a hidden door. Eddie, what are you doing in here? Oh, Miss Nina. Oh, they're still here. Still here? Who? They... They came. I, I couldn't see, but suddenly I knew that they were there, and I, I went into a panic. I had to hide. And then I, I, I saw them. They, they looked like they were floating, but they were, they were just blurs, and the air was vibrating. They, they didn't speak, but, but these voices, these voices in my head, hundreds of voices. Eddie, have you been drinking again? No, no, I haven't been drinking, I swear. Well, at least not a lot. But they were really there. I could see them. I could feel them. I wasn't imagining things. Believe me. Those black capes. With, with those bony fingers. I'll never forget it. It's okay, Eddie. Just come out of there and... calm down. The poor guy's nerves are shot. I should talk to him after he's calmed down a bit. A key. Eddie must have lost it here. Oh, 
Hard to believe that a dino with horns like that was strictly a vegetarian. Maybe it's not such a good idea to count on it. The diagram is about how and if asteroids and meteors could have been responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. When I look at the description of the effects, the theory seems very plausible. It brings a little illumination into the darkness. I'd better leave that on, otherwise I won't be able to see anything in here. I take it the fuses are in here. This one's locked. That's the key I found in the Saurian statue. What luck! The key fits! The fuses are all numbered. I expect that the numbers stand for the separate rooms in the museum. I'll just turn Max Gruber's blaring music down to a bearable level. Ah, and I didn't save! What a mess. Redoing all of that work is gonna take hours. Mr. Gruber, please! Let me in! I need to talk to you! Hmm? What? Hold on just a sec. Hello, you're Nina Kalinkov, right? Yeah, how did you know that? Your father told me about you. I'm so happy to finally meet you. Were you wanting to have a look over your father's shoulder while he's working? I wanted to see him, but when I got here, the door to the museum was standing wide open, and his office was in total chaos. Oh yeah, Eddie was crouching completely terrified inside the reproduction of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and was stammering something about floating creatures. Hmm. Doesn't exactly sound like a strict observation of the work rules. But I'm not at fault. I haven't come out of my office for hours. What does your father have to say about it? That's exactly it. He's gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? He couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. I have a sneaking suspicion that something terrible has happened here. You really didn't see anything? No, unfortunately not. My father's room looks like it's been rummaged through. Do you know what my father was working on last? Not exactly. Actually, he was supposed to have been taking inventory. We're renovating. Yeah, I know, but... But he mentioned recently that the inventory wasn't top priority right now. Something came up that he wanted to tend to first. You don't happen to know what that was, do you? No, like I said, I was stressed out too. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary recently? Any strange occurrences? Was my father behaving differently than usual? No, not really. We haven't seen much of each other in the last couple of days. I was under a lot of stress and he seemed like he had a lot to do too. Darn. Maybe you should get the police involved. The whole thing sounds a bit unsettling. Yeah, I already tried. But they don't seem to be interested in my father's disappearance. The caretaker was totally out of his mind, stammering something about men in black robes and strange voices. Eddie? Well, you know, he's a really great guy, but... But he likes to hit the bottle, I know. But I've never seen him like that before. He seemed like something had really scared him. Well, if someone really was here, then Eddie might have seen something, and combine his lively imagination with a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, but I think I'll go ahead and talk to him as soon as he's gotten a hold of himself again anyway. He's the only one who might be able to help me. I'll just keep looking. I'm beginning to feel like Eddie does. I'm totally confused and I'm really starting to feel scared. If you need help, I'll be here. Okay, thanks a lot. Who are you and what are you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Detective Kansky. I'm leading the investigation here, and who are you? Me? Nina Kalinkov. I called you. Well, well. 
So I hear your father disappeared. Yeah, I arrived here and wanted to see my father. He said he'd still be at the museum. And when I got here, the door to the museum was ajar and it looked like a bomb had hit his office. I'm really worried. Thanks for coming. Do you have any idea what could have happened here? I can't believe that my father could have created such a mess. Hmm. I don't even know your father. But we can't rule out anything. Do you really mean to say that... I'm not saying anything at all, dearie. I just take all possibilities into account as long as the facts aren't on the table. Do you think something happened to my father? Hard to say. I thought the police wouldn't be able to help me as long as my father's life wasn't in danger. Listen, girly. I've been in the business for almost 40 years. I know when something stinks. And this thing really stinks. And if you have something to do with this, then come out with it. I'll find out sooner or later. Hello? I called the police. Well, more like, I tried to get them to come here. Why would I do that if I had... Criminals always do the most illogical things. I'm not fooled by such things. Otherwise, I wouldn't have become a detective. Yeah, all right, I get it. You're a really clever guy. If you find something out, you'll let me know right away, right? Yeah, I need your phone number and address anyway. And don't leave the city. I might have some more questions. Now get out. You're just getting in the way and messing up the evidence. Strange guy, this detective, eh? Yeah, and not exactly the friendliest of his profession. But maybe you have to be like that in his job. Yeah, could be. The main thing is that he finds out what happened to my father. At least there's someone who believes that something is completely and utterly wrong. I believe you too. Thanks. And I'd like to help you too. I don't need to go to bed anymore anyway, and I can always sleep when I'm dead. So, if I can do something for you... That's really nice. Just check and see if your father has already got home. He might be worried already and is going to sentence you to two weeks without allowance because you're late. Yeah, that'd be nice. Unfortunately, I won't be back at the office until this evening. But please come by or call me. If your father is back, then we'll have something to celebrate. If not, then maybe I can do something for you. Okay, I will do that. See you tomorrow and good night. Good night. And sleep well. You too. Two angry-looking Saurian creatures. Both of them look as if they are watching over the museum's entrance. My father has worked hard for months on the exhibition of the rulers of long ago. Hopefully I'll find him again soon. And hopefully, he's doing well. This must have broken off one of the lights at the construction site. my motorcycle. Dad? Are you home? Oh god, my head's gonna explode. Oh, hell. Someone's been at work here, too. First his office and now his apartment? What has my father gotten himself into? I should be more careful in the future. The guys who did this seem like they're pretty darn serious. Mmm, yummy. 
yummy cold pizza with stinky tuna fish. Why am I doing this? The smell alone could probably peel the paint off the walls. But then again, beggars can't be choosers. Dad's old shortwave radio. The antenna is broken off and there's no tape cassette inside. I doubt I'll hear anything other than a steady static hiss. Salt, also known as white gold in the Middle Ages. There's a dentist appointment on one and a shopping list on the other. I can't read the third one and the fourth one is empty. Please don't get me anywhere. A pencil, browned and equally exciting in all other regards. Password protected. Think, Nina, think. <laughs> Documents about my father's expeditions and research results. Looks like the burglar was really interested in them. There are stacks of folders missing. There probably won't be anything else worth finding. Looks like the burglar was very thorough. It's unbelievable how little clothing men need to get through life. Why there are people in the world who are soothed by stupidly gaping at fishes I will never... Wait a sec. There's something sparkly over there. Besides a few fish, there's a key swimming around in there. There's a grate on top of the aquarium. I can't fit my hands through. A biography of George Shrub. Since when does my father read that kind of trash? I hope no one's expecting me to read that. This thing is ready for the junkyard, and the headphones are missing too. All right, all right, I'll do it. A single rubber glove and a bicycle spoke. Not exactly a spectacular profit. The bucket is full of water. Oh, the handle just came off. Without the grip, it's hard to carry. Some colleagues of mine would say that's not possible. That won't work. You can't do it like that. My motorcycle. That leads to the sewer system. The stench is coming out of every opening. A box full of junk that is practically screaming that I'm going to find something inside that'll be useful to me at some point. There's an oily liquid dripping off of it. The bowl is half full of water. The little girl looks sad. Hello there. Uh, hello? What are you doing here all alone? Did you sleep here or something? Who are you? My name is Nina. And yours? Oh, hello, Nina. I'm Lisa. So tell me, did you really spend the night here? Yes. Why? Don't you have a home? Yeah, but I was scared. To go home? Yeah, 
I'm going to get in a whole lot of trouble for sure. My bike is broken, and Dad's camera too. And that's why you spent the night out here in the cold? How did that happen? I was playing here in front of the museum, and then suddenly, I got scared. I didn't exactly know why, but I just wanted to hide in the bushes. And then suddenly, there were these strange men in black costumes. So I sat there in the bushes, and suddenly, I got even more scared. I just wanted to get away. Then on accident, I pushed the button on the camera. There was a bright flash, and the men turned around. They looked at me, but... But what? But they didn't have faces. It was so awful, and then I just ran away. I ran and ran as fast as I could. And then I realized that I had lost my camera, and so I had to go back. Luckily, those creepy men weren't there anymore. And I found the camera again, but it didn't work anymore. And since my bike was broken too, I didn't dare go home. Will you help me? Will you come home with me? Or can I live with you? No, better not. But I'll help you fix the stuff. But you have to promise me that you'll go home right away. Your parents are probably worried to death. Okay, good. What's up with the bike? I think I ran over some stupid shard of glass at the construction site, and now I have a flat. And to top it off, the bike was brand new, and my mother made sure to tell me to take extra good care of it, because we don't have much money, you know, and we can't afford a new bike. Don't worry. You don't need to buy a new bike just because you have a flat. I can take a look at it. And your camera, too. Would you do that for me? You're so nice. But do you even know how? Of course, no problem. Give it to me. I don't know. What if you can't fix things so good? Fix the bike first. If you can do that, then I'll give you the camera. It was really expensive, and if you break it even more... Yeah, yeah, I understand. I gotta prove myself first. Okay, good. Then we'll start with the tire. This photo is my only hope for a hot lead. So there's nothing left for me to do but start fixing the tire. Show me your camera. Fix my bike first. You're really stubborn. Yeah, my mom says that all the time. She's right. See you later. But you'll be back, promise? Of course, don't you worry. The tube is flat. I'll have to remove the tube. The three golden rules for patching a tire. Find the hole, mark the spot, apply the patch. The thing will fall apart if I so much as look at it. Aside from that, I do have my motorcycle. I can move more quickly with it. The only thing that could still be of use is the air pump. This air pump looks like it still works. The tube is definitely busted. There's air coming out somewhere. I should find out where it's coming from. The bowl is too small. I can't even start to get the tube in there. I'll hold the tube under water and see where the bubbles come out. So I found the hole and marked the spot. Since I don't have anything to use as a patch, I'd better not put glue on the tube. No idea if the rubber glove will work as a makeshift patch. In any case, just stuffing it into the tire won't work. So now I've smeared glue on the glove. Hopefully this stuff won't dry too quickly. Hopefully the glove will withstand the pressure. I can't think of a better alternative right now. The tire tube is patched. Now I just have to put it back inside the tire. The storage compartment in the seat is locked.
Little Lisa should be able to ride it again now. Hello, I'm back again. Oh, hello, Nina. I patched the hole in the tube. I never would have thought it. Excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? Well, you don't exactly look like you could do something like that. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm a motorcycle mechanic. Yeah, so? You still don't look like you could fix a bike. I'll just take that as a compliment. And now that I've proved myself worthy, I can fix your camera too. Yeah, that'd be great. Here, take it. See you later. But you'll be back, promise? Of course, don't you worry. This digital camera doesn't work. I have no idea how I'm supposed to fix it. I still hope I can get a few significant photos from it. There are batteries in here. Maybe they still work. I'll leave the portable cassette player here, though. I don't want to schlep around any unnecessary junk. Two AA batteries. What do you know? It works after all. The batteries were just dead. Now I'm curious to see what the pictures show. They're all pictures of Lisa. But here, two little figures in black robes. Too bad you can't see the faces. But then Eddie could have been right. Maybe I should go talk to him again. Here, I fixed your camera. Really? Cool, you really did it. You're great, thanks. Don't mention it. Here, just for that, I'll give you my lucky charm. It's a little magnet in the shape of a hamster. We hang it on our microwave at home, but I think you should have it. Oh, thanks a lot. Now get going. Your parents are probably worried sick about you. Unfortunately, I can relate to that all too well right now. A microwave hamster. Seems to me I've seen something like this before. The storage compartment in the seat is locked. The storage compartment is open now. My cell phone and my sunglasses. I'd better take both before they get swiped. Dark blue and very cool. This thing has all the bells and whistles. You can even play Orion Squad 1 with it. The carpet is totally filthy here. I should really give my father a new one for Christmas. There's something in between the planks. Even with my slender fingers, I can't get in there. An old bicycle spoke, and proof that I'll take just any old piece of junk with me. Got it! A cassette! That's weird. Was it left there deliberately, or did it just happen to fall in there by accident? The cassette that I fished out of the crack in the floor. I'd sure like to know what's on it. Dad's old shortwave radio. The first and last on the car. A fourth of the openings in the entrance to the underworld. And finally, the guardians of my work. What? 
What's that? Some kind of code? Dad, sometimes you are just off your rocker. leads to the sewer system. The stench is coming out of every opening. leads to the sewer system. The stench is coming out of every opening. Password protected. Think, Nina, think. Two, three, four, two, no wonder Dad tape recorded the code. No one would be able to find the password very quickly. You're not supposed to read other people's email. Then again, extraordinary circumstances call for extraordinary measures. So let's start snooping around. There are only two emails in the inbox. One about boosting performance and the other about women over 80. Neither of them interest me that much. The trash file is empty. But there's an email to ok at nms.de in the sent file. Subject, Tunguska. Could be interesting. I'll just go ahead and open it. Hello, Oleg. Haven't heard from you in a long time. I'm doing well again. It took me quite some time to come to terms with the whole thing. To answer your question, it's been a long time since I've thought about that. And honestly, I'm rather happy about it. I underestimated those guys once already, and my wife paid with her life. I swore back then to drop the subject for once and for all. Please don't take offense, but I'm just going to leave it at that. But now that you're living nearby again, we can meet in person. I would like to see you again. Get in touch and let me know. When and where would be convenient. Vladimir Kalenkov. Dad underestimated these guys and my mother paid with her life? What did he mean by that? She died in a car accident. I really need to contact this Oleg. Maybe he knows something that can help me out. There's a grate on top of the aquarium. I can't fit my hands through. I'll try to draw the key up the side of the glass using the magnet. Got it. A small golden key. Oh, the book has a lock. And apparently it's not a book at all but some sort of chest well disguised in the cover of a book that no one would willingly pick up. The chest is secured with a lock. The key should be fairly flat, so the old hairpin trick probably won't work. My father's address book. That could help me out. And a little note attached to a ribbon. There's a number on this note, LA60AK19AL. Under that, there's a description of the diadem that was probably robbed from an oriental princess about 200 years ago. Originally, the three largest gemstones in the world had been incorporated into this diadem. On the left, an emerald. On the right, a ruby. 
and in the middle, an amethyst. My father wrote something on the back. The diadem will illuminate the real princess, and she will realize that money is not the greatest treasure. Let's see if this Oleg is in there, the one who wrote the email to Daddy. Oh, here. Oleg Kambersky. He even lives close by. Maybe I should just pay him a little visit. So here we are. Hopefully that's the Oleg that my father wrote the email to. And hopefully he knows something that can be helpful. I haven't really been able to find out much yet. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Are you Oleg Kambersky? Yeah. Why? I'm... I'm Nina Kalinkov. Yeah? And? Yeah. Okay. Uh... You know my father, Vladimir Kalinkov, and I thought you... I don't know any Vladimir Kalinkov. Now, if you'll excuse me, please. Phooey. That wasn't very successful. I hope for the biggest break in the search for my father, and that guy doesn't even let me speak. Did I say something wrong? Or exactly the right thing? A sweet little food bowl for our furry friends. A blue trash bag, hopefully unused. A relic from long ago, before everyone had cell phones. I wouldn't know who to call, and even if I did know who to call, why am I paying exorbitant basic rates for my cell phone if I don't use it? A broom handle, but it could be a handle from a shovel, too. The guy is hectically making phone calls. Does that have something to do with my visit? If only I were a fly on the wall in his office. Oleg is still on the phone, and he's not exactly leaving the impression that he's relaxed. Looks like this Kambersky guy is a hobby gardener. Even his garden hose is green. Cats, little hairy beasts that just sleep and eat. I'm finally gonna get rid of the stinky stuff, and the cute little fuzzball will probably even like it. Cats, little hairy beasts that just sleep and eat. Now I can tape my cell phone almost everywhere. The cell phone's camera function is on, a rare example of the European roaming dictaphone. Now I just need to somehow lure the cat into the kitchen.
that should make our little pussycat real thirsty. Wonderful, it worked! Oleg is still on the phone, and the cat will be drinking for a while, and hopefully recording the conversation. I love it when a plan comes together. Let's see how the cat reacts to my cell phone's vibrate mode. Oh, great. The cat is up in the tree and my cell phone is stuck up there in a crotch of the tree. How am I supposed to get to it? I can't reach it. I've reinforced the opening of the bag with the bucket's handle. Just a little more tape around it. Yeah, that should do it. That could work. Wonderful. Let's see if the recording of Oleg's phone conversation gets me anywhere. Talenkov isn't here anymore. No, Tunguska wasn't mentioned, but there wasn't any opportunity to either. Yeah, I, I just think someone urgently needs to take care of the matter. All right, so you'll call back then. Bye. Well, that wasn't very productive. Okay, so this is what we have. Someone should be tending to some kind of matter. I hope the matter isn't me. Besides that, something about Tunguska. There was also something in the mail for Oleg. Maybe I should ask Max about that later. Max Gruber said he'd be back at the museum sometime this evening. I should use the time to get some shut-eye. If my feminine intuition doesn't fail me, I could regret it if I don't. Did you get what I wanted? Not yet. We've searched through everything but haven't found anything. And Kalinkov? Still nothing here either. We'll probably have to take other options into consideration. I don't care what you do, as long as I get results. Don't disappoint me. Strange. I feel like I'm always being followed. Even when I came home earlier, for a brief moment, I thought that I saw the face of that Konsky guy in the window. Oh well, most likely it's my nerves. I hope Max heard something from my father. Hello? Can I interrupt for a moment? You're not interrupting, on the contrary. Have you heard from your father? No, unfortunately not. And last night I was attacked. Attacked? Are you hurt? No, nothing to worry about. But it must be because of something important. Do you really have no idea what it could be? No, I... He's been under a lot of stress in the last few days, but that's happened before. Looking back, there are plenty of ways to interpret it, but... Especially conspicuous? No, not really. That's a shame. Yesterday evening you offered me your help. Does the offer still stand? But of course. My name is Max, by the way. Nina. But you know that, don't you? So, ask away.
In the last few hours, I've heard the name Tunguska several times. Do you know anything about it? Do you mean that Tunguska catastrophe from 1908? Ah, uh, yes, could be. At the beginning of the last century, something exploded there. The destruction must have been enormous, but even today, nobody really knows what happened back then. Your father once took part in an expedition to Tunguska, but you probably know that, don't you? We never really spoke much about what he used to do. After my mother's death, he never wanted to speak about his work in Russia anymore. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. That's okay. It was a long time ago. She was killed in a traffic accident. Shortly after that, we came to Germany. I think my father simply wanted to leave all of that behind him. And your father never spoke about his work in Russia? Didn't you ever ask him? No. He asked me never to ask him again. And I kept my word, despite being very interested at times. Well, I know a little more about it. In 1908, an unidentified object went down over the Siberian taiga. A huge area was completely destroyed by the shockwave and a wall of fire. The shepherds who lived there, the so-called Evenk, were either hurled through the air or burnt. There were hardly any survivors to witness anything. Several expeditions were started to find out the cause of this catastrophe, but despite all their efforts, no clues or any evidence was found that was at all helpful. And in time, several fantastic theories arose. From a meteorite colliding with Earth, to the appearance of an unknown type of energy, to the explosion of a spaceship. And off the top of my head, that is about everything that I can tell you on the subject. But somewhere in the archive, I still have a few articles over the Tunguska phenomenon lying around. Shall I go and get them? Yes, that would be sweet of you. Oleg spoke about it, and I read one of my father's mails to him. There was also something about it in there. Maybe it will bring me a little further. Okay, I just have to get a few small things done here, and then I'll have a look around the archive. Thank you very much. Yesterday evening, Eddie was mumbling something about people in black robes. I didn't take him very seriously at first, because his description was, let's say, a little strange. But I spoke to a little girl today who saw something similar last night. She even took a photo of the men in black robes. Unfortunately, there is not very much to see, but I'll certainly speak to Eddie about it again. Do you know where I can find him? No, I have no idea. I haven't seen him all day. He's probably crept away somewhere quiet to think about it all. You mean he's drinking again? Yes, I'm afraid so. Unless... Unless what? Oh, nothing. Nothing? Come on out with it, tell me! Well, if those strange men in black noticed that he was watching them... You mean they came back? I don't know. At the moment, I have no idea what is actually happening here. Well, this is something we have in common. I found this piece of paper amongst my father's records. Does it tell you anything? LA-60-AK-19-AL? That sounds like one of our exhibits. What about it? No idea. I was hoping... that you could tell me that. Not spontaneously, but I can go and get the item. The note with the description of the diadem is missing, but you just had it in your hand. Well, I don't know any more about it either. Thanks a lot. Can I take my time to have a look at it? Of course, but please don't forget to put it back later. Otherwise your father will tear my head off. If he still can. Hey, stop thinking like that. We'll find him, I promise. Yes, hopefully. There must be an important reason why Daddy kept a piece of paper with the description of the diadem at home. But what? And what is that about the true princess? He used to call me that sometimes. Is it a message to me that I should be able to understand somehow? Think, Nina. Think quickly. Does the name Oleg Kamburski say anything to you? Kamburski? Oleg Kamburski? No, nothing. Should it? Unfortunately, I don't exactly know that either. The things out of the archive about Tunguska... Yes, I'll get going now. But it could take a while until I've sorted through the records. No problem. I'll wait here. On the outside, it seems totally normal. But on the inside, it's ice cold.
on the outside, it seems... Let's see what we find here. Plaster of Paris. The text says to add water and vegetable oil and mix to achieve the desired consistency. Looks kind of threatening. That red eye on the totem seems to be following me everywhere I go. I don't even believe in magic and all that stuff, but I find it creepy anyway. If I swipe things from Max's office, he certainly won't keep helping me, but I'd like to get rid of this eye. There are three stones missing out of the diadem. It looks rather unspectacular, but it seems to be important for my father. I should find out why. The label is illegible, but judging from the skull and the other symbols, it must be extremely corrosive. So the spoke has now broken off, but that eye now can no longer look at me in that evil way. I can only hope that Max doesn't notice. A red glass bead. At least, I think it's glass. I'll carefully pour the acid over the stone. The acid is doing its work admirably. The stone is beginning to corrode. I'll have to take it out of the acid at the right moment, otherwise the inclusion will go the same way as the rest of the stone. The light is refracted a thousand times in the amethyst. It's beautiful. No idea why my father didn't remove it from its ugly stone encasement a long time ago. I've just stirred the dry plaster. Now it just needs a little oil. There's an oily liquid dripping off of it. I'll squeeze a bit of this oily, slimy liquid into the bowl. The putty is ready for use. I hope I know what I'm doing. That diadem has now been robbed of any beauty it once had. Yes, that should hold. Great! It fits! This must have broken off one of the lights at the construction site. I've laid both lenses over each other. They now have a green shimmer. I've laid the broken glass over the lens glass, and now the lenses have a strong green tint. I hope that thing is in the right position. As soon as the putty has dried, I'll only be able to get it off with brute force. My replacement jewels are not really beautiful, but then modeling and handicrafts were never my greatest strengths. Whether I'll get any brighter? Wow, it works! Somebody seems to have marked one of the rooms with invisible ink, and it has just been revealed by the colored light beam. I have no idea where this room 8 is located exactly because there's no map key. Although, it seems to be one of the rooms that are being renovated. Wow, not bad. I only go away for a few minutes and you transform the museum into a light show. Oh, I... I'm sorry, but... That's okay. But 
What is all this stuff? What does it mean? I don't exactly know either. But if this riddle really comes from my father, then he must have had an extremely good reason for the whole effort. Have you found anything out yet? I'm still working on it. And you? Is there anything new on the subject of Tunguska? Not a lot. Here, I found these two articles. The light beam has changed the color of the skate plan on the wall. A room with the number 8 seems to be highlighted. Is that one of the rooms that is currently being renovated? Yes, and they've been renovating it for ages. The complete substance of this house is, unfortunately, no longer the best, and the workers are having a lot of problems completing the job. Was there anything special in that room? Well, no, not really. All of the exhibits from that room are currently stored in my office. Are you looking for something specific? If only I knew. We can go straight to my office. Maybe you'll find something there to help you out. Come on into my office and we'll have a look at the exhibits from room 8. Have a look around. All these things are out of the room that's being renovated. I think that must be some sort of calendar, but how to read it is what I don't know. A rider? I always thought the Aztecs didn't have horses. Stranger and stranger. That thing has obviously just been set in there. It doesn't belong to the relief disc. That could be an antique. Unfortunately, that's about all I can say about it. It looks ancient. Although I saw one like these in some Swedish furniture store only last week. I think this one, however, is ancient. A vase from the Ming Dynasty. I broke one like this when I was a kid. My father was never the picture of organization, but not even my place looks this bad. The coin seems to complete the set. The note says, and the prince said to the princess, whether vertical, horizontal, or in both main diagonals, make sure that there is never a repeat within a line. Hmm. Does that have something to do with the coins? Oops, that opened up a trap door. It appears to be some kind of secret compartment. What could my father need one for? It contains documents. It has to do with my father's research expeditions. It's written here that in 1958, he was the leader of a secret expedition into the Tunguska region. Apparently after the 1958 expedition, someone in the highest position tried to keep the results secret. It has to do with some strange plant growth. Daddy wanted to continue his research, but all further investigations were prohibited. Then apparently he did travel to the region again himself, only in the company of a certain Manuel Perez and a local guide. That was in 1977. If I understand this correctly, a lot went wrong on this expedition. Something awful happened to Perez, and both of them were arrested. 
My father has not been able to find out what exactly happened to him that night, and Perez disappeared without a trace from that time forward. Daddy writes later that here at the latest, he should have realized that human life is always more important than research. What does he mean? Maybe I should ask Max. He'd be able to help me with all the formulae and explain the scientific expressions. And this is a letter from some society in Ireland. But these are just empty pages? I definitely need help. Maybe Max knows something about it all. Sorry, I still don't have anything. But I... How that is connected with my father's disappearance, I don't yet know. But I have found some of his records in a secret compartment. They describe a secret expedition and some very strange events and... Hey, slow down. I can't follow you that quickly. The best thing to do would be to come with me to my father's office. I'll show you the records and then we should perhaps have a look at his filing cabinet. Okay, let's go. I told you that I didn't want to see you here again. Believe me, it really would have been better if you had kept out of it. Now I have no other choice but to... Kambersky? Looks like I came just in time. Are you okay? Yes, I think so. What did the detective want from us anyway? Did he want to shoot us? Well, he probably doesn't have his weapon trained on you just for the fun of it. We should get away from here before this guy wakes up. I'm sorry that I was so unfriendly when we first met. For some time now, I've had the feeling that I'm being pursued and my nerves are shot right now. Of course I know your father. To be precise, I have known him for a very long time, and I know him very well. I was with him on one of his expeditions back then. We were in the Tunguska region back then, together with the Cuban Manuel Perez, an Irish biologist whose name I can't recall at the moment, and some assistants. I don't want to get into details regarding the events of the past, but for some reason, someone appears to be very interested right now. I have the feeling that not only your father, but I as well am in danger, and possibly all members of that past expedition still living. Of course, I can't prove it, but if I'm not mistaken, the Russian Secret Service, FSB, could be behind it. They already tried back then to prevent us and your father in particular, from undertaking further expeditions. You know about your mother? My mother? Why? What does she have to do with anything? You know that she died in an accident? Yes, but... It is rather questionable whether it really was an accident. You were in the car as well. I was driving behind you when the car suddenly crashed through a bridge railing and plunged into a river. I was barely able to get you out of there. But when I tried to save your mother, two of my fingers were torn off. Therefore... Daddy never told me anything about that. I'm certain he tried not to burden you with that as well. The two of us have already reproached ourselves enough. But enough about the past. Now we have to find your father again. Due to the events of the last few days, I activated a few of my contacts. One of them is Sergei, who is moving in circles which... well... I'd rather not be found anywhere near them. But he knows just about everything that no one is actually supposed to know. According to his information, a research station was built in the Tunguska region decades ago. And now, another transport is planned to go there. Supposedly, not all the scientists who are to be transported there are participating voluntarily. This research trip and the disappearance of your dad a few days before its start could very well be linked. Does that mean my father was kidnapped and is now sitting on a train to Siberia? What do they want from him? Even if, officially, he hasn't been active in research for years, he is still an expert in his field. I am sure that Sergei could help us. I have to go to Moscow? I have an airplane. We could be there in a few hours. I know this is all quite a lot to swallow at once. But if your dad is really on that train, we have no time to lose. As soon as he reaches the Tunguska region, we'll barely be able to get him out again. The area around the station is too heavily guarded. What do you mean? I don't know, but maybe it is the only chance. So let's go. It would be good if someone stayed behind, in case Vladimir does get in touch after all. But... Nina, 
We should go if we want another chance to get there before the train leaves. I suppose I could have another look at your father's records, but I don't have a good feeling. Great. Then let's go. Take good care of yourself, okay? I'll do my very best. I wish I could. Yes, me too. Good luck. Ola didn't tell me you were such a beauty. If I had known that, my price would have gone down. Yes, I'm happy to see you too. You can help me in the search for my father? Sergei can do a lot of things. Some say Sergei can do everything. But Sergei is martyr, so let's just stick with Sergei can do almost everything. Yes, yes. Modesty honors you. What can I do for you? I thought you knew that. Sure. But Sergei needs all the information again firsthand. And looking at your mouth and your moving lips. Are you going to help me or just gawk? How does the saying go? One hand washes the other. Okay. So my father has disappeared. I only wanted to meet him in the museum where he worked. And as I arrived. Yeah, yeah. Sergei knows that. Then what do you want to know? What did your father do in the last few weeks? What was he working on? Who was he working for? Oh, quite honestly, I have no idea. I have never really spoken to my father to any extent about his work. He tends to hold hour-long lectures about scientific things, and after a few minutes, I tend to fall half asleep. Then at some time, we agreed to leave the subject of work out of our conversations. Not good. Really not good. Yes, I know, but... It doesn't matter now anyway. But again, I really don't know what it was or for who he has been working for recently. Besides his work for the museum, he still held lectures and prepared reports, but I can't be any more exact than that. All I know is that in the last few days, he seemed a bit unconcentrated, as if he was especially concerned with something. But what that was? That gets us nowhere. A couple of birdies told me in the last few days that another train is leaving for the Tunguska region today. It has to do with some kind of scientific experiments. What kind exactly, I don't know. But it's not important now. In any case, a few old friends have been reactivated. Old friends? Reactivated? Scientists and people who know the area who were in the Tunguska region in the past, they were, well, asked to cooperate. Some came voluntarily. Others had to be persuaded. Ah, oh, I understand. Good. Be that as it may, your father may be with them. Is he in danger? If he doesn't do anything stupid, he won't have any problems normally. But how are we going to get him out? We aren't going to get him out at all. But as I've already said, Sergei can do almost everything. An old acquaintance is standing at the side entrance of the train station. He'll take you in and give you a pass and a uniform. As soon as you're on board the train, you should be able to find enough time to look around. The guards on board are usually busy drinking and playing cards during the trip. Oh, and by the way, you're traveling under the name Nina Perkova. Your last name could give you away if your father is actually on board. So I get in the train, eliminate all the guards, and free my father. Alone? Great plan. Just great. When you find him, then we'll see how you'll get your father out. Not to worry. Sergei would never leave such a sweet ass hanging. Okay, that's a relief then. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit nervous about my father. I really am happy that you could help me. Thank you. That's okay, little one. They don't call Sergei the good soul of Moscow for nothing. And don't forget, even if you get information that you don't know what to do with, Sergei can certainly figure it out. Okay, 
I'll see what I can find out. Nice weather we're having, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's much too nice to sit around out here. Comrade Yushin is taking your shift now, isn't that nice of him? What? Why? Come with me. Let's chat a bit. It doesn't seem to be my lucky day today. Was that a coincidence, or did they find out that Sergei bribed one of the guards? In any case, I now have a huge problem. Sergei has gone. My cell phone has no signal here, and I have to get onto the train fast. Mina, it's time for a stroke of genius. I need an idea. That rust bucket is in a really miserable condition. Even with wheels, that thing probably wouldn't move. Without wheels, there is not a hope in hell. That thing is rather rusty and immovable. It has some similarities with men of its age. That thing is completely rusted and the crank doesn't move. Well, let's rummage around in the garbage, shall we? Great! A rusted nut and an unidentifiable iron something. It's the small things in life that bring happiness. I have already picked up all the treasures. I could, of course, burrow around in that filth a bit longer, just for fun, but maybe later. Luckily, they are not as heavy as they look. It is. It looks like, uh... It could certainly be... I've got no bloody idea. As long as the worker is looking the other way, I should take the opportunity. Let's see what Russian construction workers have for breakfast. A thick rubber band. Hey! A catapult! We used to shoot at tin cans with these when we were children. The catapult is loaded and ready to do its designer proud. He's making a furious impression. Fun on the job usually looks different. Hello. So late and you're still working? Yeah, real funny, huh? You probably think it's hilarious that a poor guy like me has to work so late, and then has to muck around in other people's shit. Real funny, huh? Ha <laughs> ha. Wow, you're in a good mood. I wasn't having a laugh at your cost, honestly. Oh, uh, sorry. I guess I'm a little irritable. Today's actually supposed to be my day off, and... Yeah, and now I have to work overtime just because this bunch of soldiers doesn't know how to flush the toilet. You hopefully aren't one of them, are you? No way. Don't worry. Good. When I catch the person who dumped this shit on my lap, he's going to be sick just thinking of the word toilet. Yeah, look, could we change the subject, please? My graphic imagination is very well developed, and my stomach is remembering what it had for lunch. Having to work on your day off is, of course, really bitter. That would piss me off, too. Excuse me, a slip of the tongue. Did you already have some plans? Cinema, a few bars or anything? Yeah, I wanted to go fishing. A couple of beers, rod in hand. Yeah, I had a boyfriend like that once. Huh? Nothing, nothing. Tell me more. Well, just a really relaxing day. But maybe I can do it tomorrow instead. If only they'd finally pick the right lottery numbers. That car over there, is that yours? No, I think that's been there for a few years now. I don't even know if there are any parts still in it. The lottery. What is so special about that? They hold a special drawing in which you can really clean up. You know, 
I've been playing the lottery for 20 years and have never won anything. But today, today is my lucky day. I could tell when I woke up. All this shit is gonna end today. I'm gonna buy myself a little cabin on a nice river somewhere. Maybe I'll even buy the river too. And then... Yeah, and then spend the whole day with your rod in the water, I know. Exactly. The stupid thing is, you have to have every number in exactly the right order. If the first three numbers match, you can win something too. But to really clean up, all the numbers must be correct. That means, in the worst scenario, if you have one wrong number, you can lose completely. Yep, but I'm gonna win. Eight, five, six, five, four, nine. I'm gonna have a new life with these numbers. So the soldiers have screwed up your day off. Did they just turn up all of a sudden? No, it wasn't that sudden. There have been rumors going around for a few days, but I had no idea there would be this many. I have no idea what they're all doing here. Hey, you don't mean to tell me that the soldiers are swarming all over this quarter and you have no idea why they're here? Well, there are always a few soldiers running around here. After all, it's a military train station. But I haven't seen this many in a long time. I've heard they're heading to Novozibirsk. And what do they want there? I have no idea. They don't talk to us. Think they're just better than us. Most of them don't have an original idea in their head anyway. They merely follow their orders. Someone told me there are also scientists with them. And a little while ago I saw large cages. I have no idea what they're planning. Cages? Yes. Apparently there are some prisoners on the train. Maybe that's why. Cages for prisoners? Are they keeping my father like a wild animal? I urgently have to get on that train and get him out. I'd better get going then. Me too. That rust bucket is in a really miserable condition. Even with wheels, that thing probably wouldn't move. Without wheels, there is not a hope in hell. I'll try to support this wreck with these bricks. That thing is completely rusted and the crank doesn't move. No cheese, no ham, but four layers of butter. Good idea. I can use the butter for lubrication. The guy who took over the job of Sergei's contact man looks extremely well trained. Let's see if some charming words will get me into the station. Hello, you wonderful man. Oh, hello. All alone are you out here? Can I enjoy your company for a while? I don't care. Uh-oh, that'll be a hard one to crack. Can I borrow your newspaper for a few minutes? What? No, no way. The nurse is finally just about to turn the doctor around. Pardon? Don't tell me you've never heard of the Siberian Saga. No, I have to pass on that. What is it? The soap opera in the Moscow News. A fascinating love story. For the last three weeks, they have been publishing a new chapter every other day. And I guess that the nurse... Yeah, great. That's enough. It sounds really gripping. Are you almost finished with it? No. Not for a while yet. I'm reading it slowly on purpose to prolong the excitement. Of course I have the newspaper at home as well, but there's not much going on here, so I can read without being disturbed. I'm really anxious to see if the head nurse's plot... No! Stop it! My doctor has forbidden too much drama and excitement. You were guarding the side entrance here. Is there any special reason for it? Yeah, no one's supposed to go in there. Talk about stating the obvious. I'm flirting with you, stupid. Oh, and because of that, they have installed a strong, muscular man like you here. What? 
Uh, you mean me? Yeah, right. I'm sure they spent a long time thinking about who they could give such an important task to. And they came to the conclusion that only you could fulfill the job. Well-trained and radiating power and strength. Yes, you're probably right. I've only been with the troops for three years, but I've already achieved a lot. Of course, I, as a mere woman, feel much better when I know that real men like you are defending our land. What is so important about the station that you have been chosen to guard the side entrance? Actually, I'm not allowed to say. It's top secret. But I guess it has to do with some secret service thing. There are masses of conspicuously inconspicuous people running around. You're not from the FSB, are you? Me? No, no, of course not. Phew. I was lucky. I nearly let the cat out of the bag. I don't want to end up like my colleague. They just took him away. Sure, I understand. Damn, I almost had him in my hands. Your colleague? Where did they take him? Is he coming back soon? I'm afraid not. The two guys that took the poor guy? from the FSB, I think. Oh, why did they take him? No idea, but it's better not to ask questions. The wrong one at the wrong time, and it could be your last question. As soon as they have you in their grip, it's not easy to get out again, if you get out at all. Thanks a lot for the information. My pleasure. See you soon. Seen from here, I would guess 60 watts. According to Sergei's theory, I should be able to get in there without any problems. What now? The guy who took over the job of Sergei's contact man looks extremely well trained. Very useful if you are standing under your sweetheart's window again, and aren't allowed in. If all of these cigarette butts are from today, and all from the same watchman, then he should apply to one of those record-breaking shows on TV. From up there, one can watch over the entire area. I'd better try to be as inconspicuous as possible, and very careful. Damn! That is the third bulb this month already! What idiot keeps ordering this cheap junk? The story was just about to get interesting. This newspaper here? Yeah? Can I have it? I guess so. The light bulb just exploded on me. It was really old anyway, and... It'll be weeks for sure before anyone replaces it. You have to fill out a form that is signed by the officer on duty and then faxed to the ministry. From there, it goes through three committees and with some luck, I'll see another one before I retire. Yes, the wonders of bureaucracy are international. What about the newspaper? Fine, just take it. Here are the numbers of the special draw. Three, five, six, five, four, nine. One single wrong number. The sewage worker will be kicking himself in the ass all day long. One small manipulation of the lottery results and the big win is perfect. Only short term, but isn't short term happiness better than none at all? Hey, hello, it's me again. Hi. You smoke quite a lot, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I know it's unhealthy, but I simply can't give it up. I've tried everything. That's why I'm glad I get to sit outside. At least here I can smoke. Want one? Yes, please. It'll be good for my nerves. Isn't smoking forbidden inside the station? Absolutely no smoking. 
They probably have stuff stored in there that could raise half of Moscow to the ground. Oh? What things? No idea. And to be honest, I don't really want to know. Sometimes, ignorance is bliss. Very wise words. Thanks a lot for the information. My pleasure. See you soon. Here, the late issue. You can find out in here whether you can go fishing tomorrow or not. Yes! I won! I won! I have to go home at once and tell my wife. Oh, what's the point? I'm going straight to my favorite fishing spot and will fish all night. And I'll quit first thing in the morning. If you want to marry a rich man, you'll find me down by the river. I can only hope that he takes his sweet time about resigning. That way goes down to yesterday's digested chicken. Yum. The barrier is to stop people falling into the open sewer. It would make more sense to run one around the whole sewer. bright light could be from a floodlight, according to which I must be under the railway station now. The box seems to be dry. One of the sewage workers probably dropped it here. Some of the soldiers have been using that hole in the floor as a rubbish bin. They could at least have let a couple of gold rings drop into it. I assume that this pipe is for wastewater from the station. A heavy duty safety door. The door is open a bit but it seems to have wedged itself against something. Done it. It's open. There is nothing swimming around in there apart from a few objects I'd rather not describe. I don't know what's in there. It looks a bit like toxic waste. A valve. One can open and close the pipe with that. Why should I? Until I get an answer to this question, I'm not touching it. All of the rungs are missing. No one is supposed to get up there. Either the ladder is in an awful condition, or surprise visitors out of the sewage system are unwanted visitors. No, I can't get up there that way. The iron bars are too long and would probably get wedged in the shaft, so I can't use them as rungs for the ladder. Long iron bars. Either the ladder is in an awful condition, or surprise visitors out of the sewage system are unwanted visitors. No, I can't get up there that way. You look unbelievably strong. Are you really powerful as you look, or is it more fat than muscle? Well... I do work out a little. 
After all, I want to make sure my body is still easy on the eyes in ten years. Of course, optically, it is really very impressive. Problem with most bodybuilders is that they can pump huge weights and then not manage to open a jam jar. Hey, wait. Show me the jam jar first. Oh, have I insulted somebody's honor? I don't have a jam jar with me, but I do have these iron bars. Give it to me. That's one of my easiest exercises. Wow, I'm really impressed. Yushin has done some great work on this. If I stand on the very edge of the rungs, they should hold my weight. Now I'm inside. Now the only question is where my father could be, and how I can look around without being caught by a soldier. No smoking. A water faucet for cold water. The one for hot water was removed. After my excursion into the sewer, I'd prefer a shower. Washing my hands surely wouldn't be enough. And this holy place is where a man can still be a man and pee, standing up. I have never seen a woman pee in a urinal trough. And no, no way am I going to be the first. Hello? Are you all right in there? What? Uh, yeah. You always do that. What? You know. Peep on strangers in the bathroom. I'm not peeping. What then? You were making some really strange noises. I just wanted to see if everything was all right. It sounded somehow sick. Are you... Are you from the FSB? Is that how I look? No idea. I can't see you. Well, no, I'm not. Why does everyone here ask me if I'm from the FSB? Well, they're running around all over here. And I don't want any trouble. Who does? Why? Do you have anything to fear? I will if the train's supposed to leave, but doesn't. You see, I dropped the key in the toilet. Unpleasant. I wish you successful fishing. Very funny. My problem is also your problem. How come? Because I'm the train driver, and it's the key to the train. Oh, don't you have a spare key? No, that's why I'm afraid to come out of here. I can't tell anyone that the train can't go anywhere because the train driver lost his own key in the toilet. No, better not. Please don't give me up. Regarding the Secret Service people... What about them? What are they doing here? No idea. I didn't ask, and I hope they won't ask me. That sounds like a very wise strategy. Where exactly is the train going? You should know that. Uh, yes. But we got no such exact explanation. Well, I'm sure I don't know more than you. And if so, there has to be a good reason for it. Who's on board the train? No idea. I'm just the train driver. They only tell me what I need to know. And you? Did you sleep during the briefing? No. It wasn't especially precise. I thought you might know more. I nearly blabbed. I should be more careful. That guy is taking his oath of silence very seriously. Maybe someone else is in more of a mood for a chat. How long have you been sitting here? About three hours. Isn't that really exhausting? 
Yeah, there's a horn you could toot. Shall we start a choir? Very funny. Now I just have to make sure I get a handle on my stomach again. What's coming out just isn't normal. It's true. Sitting on the toilet is like real life. You have to be able to let go. But now is really the time to change the subject. Will you be all right without me? Sure, I have to. I'm gradually getting a little nervous. I've been running around here in circles for nearly three hours and I still couldn't smoke. Pull yourself together, Romanova. You know that we are completely understaffed. Most of the soldiers are already on the train. I think you'll manage to survive the next few minutes. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I've already chewed off all my nails. It's starting to get critical. Romanova, you... Oh, come on. Just five minutes. <sighs> okay. Okay, fine. I have to settle a few things, and then I'll take over for you. Thanks. You're a treasure. Speaking of treasure, you'll smoke with Yushin at the side entrance. Is that clear? Otherwise, you'll flirt with one of your comrades, and then you'll be gone for ages. Hey, it's okay. I get along great with Yushin. After all, we both agree that men are better lovers. Good. I'll be right back, and then you can go on your break. A small empty plate with a few coins on it. I'm not so desperate that I'd steal from a Russian toilet cleaner. A cigarette smoking peacefully away, and it stinks. Are you out of your mind? I work my ass off for you so that I can set aside five minutes and relieve you so you can take your break, and this is the thanks I get? But I... Oh, this will have consequences, I swear to you. You know why there's absolutely no smoking here, but this has consequences. There will definitely be consequences. Hopefully she won't get into too much trouble. There's nothing useful in here. I think it's broken. Considering the contents, that is not a disadvantage. A two-way radio. There is a sticker on the back with the number 15 on it. This stocking has at least as many ladders in it as its owner had lovers. A Russian military uniform. I should try it on. If it fits, I may not be recognized as a civilian straight away. An envelope. A guy who looks so good is definitely a fan of the wrong soccer team. Oh well, we all have our faults. The way he looks, he surely is no longer available and married for about 20 years. That doesn't seem to bother the owner of this locker, though. A hunky guy. He's definitely a photo model. I wonder if this lady soldier had something going on with all these men. The photo is a bit small, but he looks really cute. And he is in the military, too. Like does attract like. A five-digit combination lock. I can forget cracking it just by trying random numbers. A two-way radio. There is a sticker on the back with the number 15 on it. The stocking is still relatively clean. I wouldn't want to wear it anymore, but I didn't really want to before either. There seem to be deployment orders in there. Obviously, throughout the whole train journey, the highest state of alarm has been ordered. They're expecting trouble from some kind of terrorists. 
That's why it says in the deployment orders that all irregularities must be reported immediately. I'm obviously not the only uninvited participant in this excursion. The guards will be extremely attentive to their duties. That's not good. Not good at all. There is something here about the exceptional treatment of special guests. Does that mean the prisoners? Maybe I'll find my father on the train. I'd better hurry. Attention, attention. All passengers and assigned guards should please board the train or follow their orders. The train will be leaving in a few minutes. Neither of those gorillas in front of the door looks that pleasant. The big question is, are they keeping someone in or keeping someone out? In both cases, it makes getting in there a very tempting and interesting thought. He's guarding the train. Hello. So, comrade, are you coming with us to Tunguska? Uh, yeah. Well, it's amazing what a person will do for a couple extra rubles at the end of the month. I also need the permit. Damn. I must have left it in the changing rooms, but I don't have to go all the way back there again, do I? Yes, you do. Sorry, comrade, but I unfortunately can't do anything about it. If it were up to me, I would let you in, even without it. But it's unfortunately not up to me. The FSB guys would bite my head off if they found out. Oh, come on. Nobody has to find out about it. No, I'd rather not risk it. I heard Solotov screaming. Poor guy. Solotov? What about him? Where is he? In the game room. I think they really put him through the ringer. So hurry up and go get the permit. You still have a few minutes. And while you're at it, try to see if you can find the train driver. We've somehow lost him. I had him paged a few times already, but he simply isn't responding. I would look for him myself, but I can't leave my station. And hurry, we're already running late. Isn't the train driver here yet? No. Maybe you should have him paged again. Okay, but I don't think it'll do much good. 17 calling 48. Come in, please. 48 here. What do you need? Could you page our friend, the train driver, again? He still isn't here yet. Again? Yeah, I know. I can't do anything about it either. Okay. Would the train driver please get his fat ass to his workstation and pronto? Let's hope that it works. Do you know what the agents are doing here? Working, I suppose. No. Really? We're all just doing our job here. And most of them are also really nice. They're people just like you and me. I suppose you're right. I think I can save myself the question about the FSB people. No one dares to say a word that is in any way interesting. Is everybody already on board? Yes, almost. We're still missing a couple guys from the FSB. But otherwise, everyone should be here. And all the scientists, too? Of course. They were all brought on board as soon as we started boarding. Weren't you here yet? No, obviously not. Were there any problems? No, not really. But some of them were bound so tightly that they didn't have much of a chance to resist. Oh, yeah? Good thing, too. Have they all been put into one compartment? I don't think so, but I don't exactly know for sure. What do you care? You're only responsible for your section and not for the entire group. Yes, I'm really happy about that. If they so much as touch Daddy, hopefully I'll get into the right compartment. And if I don't, how do I find out where Daddy is? And how do I get there? Well, I'll have to think about that as soon as I get on board. Tell me, do you know why the train is so heavily guarded? You already know that, don't you? They explained it to us several times, even if I don't really believe everything. For example? For example, that the captive scientists were all spies for the enemy. But whatever, that's not my concern. What do you suspect? No idea. I just think it's strange that they're being brought to a research station now. Or maybe they aren't supposed to do any research there. What then? Tell me. Who knows what they'll do with them there. But let's change the subject because I'd rather not think about it. No, neither do I. Then I'll begin the search. Good luck. They are taking tanks along on a research trip? Just what did I get involved in here?
a crane for heavy boxes, and probably also military equipment. The room is being monitored by several cameras, and on top of that, the strict no smoking rules. Wonder what they are storing in here. I think someone got a good discount by ordering these signs by the dozen. Hello. Get out of my face. Hello. If you don't get out of here, you could end up like the guy in there. And believe me, you don't want that. So beat it. How is your stomach? You hear it. Yes, I can. And I can smell it, too. Did you manage to get your key back again? No. I'm afraid it's swimming somewhere in the sewer system by now. And no key, no journey, right? Without that key, we're all stuck here. If I get the dying urge to try a new perfume again, I'll have a look down there. Will you be all right without me? Sure. I have to. This one's been sprayed red. Is that of any importance? There is no opening for a key or anything like that. Not visible anyway. There is a small key in it. A sieve at the other end of the pipe is stopping it getting washed away. The sieve is probably there to stop rubbish getting into the pipe system. I assume that this pipe is for wastewater from the station. Now all the stocking has to do is to withstand the mass of water. I'd better get changed again. The guard on the side entrance would start asking all sorts of questions if he suddenly saw me in uniform. Hey, hello! It's me again! Hi. Can I ask you something else? Sure. Anytime. I'm bored anyway. The two men that you came here with... Psst. You should only talk about them behind closed doors. Or better yet, not at all. Oh, they're from the Secret Service. FSB, aren't they? Can you keep a secret? Yeah, sure. Good. So can I. Okay, I understand. But you could at least tell me their names, couldn't you? If you'll leave me alone about it after I do. I promise. Good. Fitizov and Radnikov. And who is who? I kept my promise. Now stop asking me questions. Just because you don't care about your health doesn't mean that I don't care about mine. Thanks a lot for the information. My pleasure. See you soon. I better put the uniform on again. Water, flow. A water faucet for cold water. The one for hot water was removed. Hopefully the stocking is of a known brand. Otherwise, the whole effort will have been for nothing. So, that should do the trick.
the key is wriggling in the net. The rest inside, I'll just try to ignore. The key is wriggling in the net. The rest is... Here, I have your key. There are also several other things inside the stocking. You'll have to get the key out yourself, though. You're a dear. No, really. You really saved my ass. Give me another two minutes, then I'm finished here, and we can finally go. And my reward? Reward? You saved my ass! Isn't the feeling of having done something good enough for you? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, action. This is number... 15. Calling number... 48. Come in, please. Central here, what is it? Headquarters. Please page both agents Fedosov and Radinkov. They should report immediately to the guard on duty in the freight compartment at the rear end of the train. Okay. Next time, I should think beforehand about what to say. It seems it worked out anyway. Solitao. The poor guy looks really badly beaten up. Smoking aloud? So there is one rule for the ladies and gents of the Secret Service and another for the rest of the population. He's still breathing, but several bones appear to be broken. Also, bad burning on his torso. It looks like he has been tortured with electric shocks. He's got nothing on him, but maybe I can use his dog tags. Those are Solitao's dog tags. Rank, private, first class. Service number 31545. A car battery. The connected cables make me think that Solitao has had a few electric shocks delivered to him. A five-digit combination lock. I can forget cracking it just by trying random numbers. Three. One. Five. Four. Five. And will the lock open now? Hey, easy when you know the right combination. There's something in it, an entry card. That must be the one that I should have got from Solitao. My new name is already on it. Nina Perkova. My traveling permit. I could get used to my new name, Nina Perkova, but never to the photo. Well then, up you go, and welcome aboard the MS Boredom, on its way to the end of the world. Damn! The train is leaving! What am I going to do now? I still haven't found any clues telling whether my father is on board or not. On the other hand, if I don't continue the search, I'll never find out. And I don't have any real alternative either, do I? Let's hope that will turn out right.
Have you found him? Not yet, but we're following some concrete clues. That is unsatisfactory. We are running out of time. The project must begin as planned. A few problems have surfaced in the little Kalenkov. Don't bore me with details. You don't mean to tell me that you can't handle a couple of amateurs, do you? No, I... Good. Then you know what you have to do. himself to sleep. A talent that too few people have. Just in time, too. That senseless twaddle was driving me around the bend. People who tell you all about their digestive problems are not the most pleasant folk to share a conversation with. But when they also start to tell you about the effects of the recently enjoyed castor oil, now I can have a little look around in peace. Dried something? It could have been fruit once. An open bottle of orange juice. Two machine guns. They are secured with snap locks. It wouldn't be a good idea for me to start anything with a whole army. It seems to be a strategic map of the Tunguska region. The arrows look like the movement of troops, but I might also be wrong. The landscape around here all looks so miserable and dreary. It's difficult to say where we are. <laughs> Only 25 watts. You're not very bright, are you? I should put the light bulb back into the lamp first. Quite a bright idea, really. A large pot. It's big and I don't need it, so I'll leave it here. I always thought you couldn't tell if an egg was fresh or not just by looking at it. I have just changed my mind. A water tap. I don't want to wash my hands at the moment. Acacia honey! Sweet and with a mild aroma. I should know. I was a honeybee in my previous life. A large pot. It's big and I don't need it, so I'll leave it here. A three-month-old duty rota. Oh, there are the first scientists already. Maybe I can get some information here. However, I should not ask too directly about my father so that no one becomes suspicious. That scientist looks like he is in an extremely bad mood. Scientific assistant. That was an insult at university, but he really looks quite nice. I have no idea what one can do with that thing. There are chemical formulae written on it. If I had paid a lot more attention at school, I still wouldn't understand them. White bread. It's so fresh and soft that it almost falls apart just by looking at it. Surely I can take one slice. The assistant's table. The assistant's table. One of the samples that gets analyzed here. As long as the scientists are in the room, I'd better not touch anything important looking. That reminds me of my chemistry lessons. Not a pleasant memory. Hello. I just wanted to see if everything is all right. What? 
Oh, yes, everything's okay. No, let me work in peace. Uh, yes, whatever you say. Hello. May I interrupt for a moment? Psst. Not so loud. Dr. Lesniak is working and is really concentrating. We really shouldn't disturb him. Plus, he's in a pretty bad mood. What happened? Why is the doctor in such a bad mood? He's under a lot of stress. We are working on a test series, and Professor Sidorkin wants results as quickly as possible. I understand. And this Professor Sidorkin gets very angry if he doesn't get results quick enough? Well, he's okay. But Dr. Lesniak is unbelievably ambitious and naturally tries to finish as soon as possible. And when the doctor is stressed out and doesn't have bread and jam, he can become quite unpleasant. Bread and jam? Yes, it sounds strange, I know. But he apparently needs it to reduce his stress. Other people beat the heck out of a sandbag. He eats bread and jam. Well... We all have our own ways and means to deal with difficult situations. And if he gets bread and jam, he gets a bit more sociable? Yes, it helps. Unfortunately, he accidentally dropped his glass jar on the train platform. And there's no jam here on the train. I've looked everywhere. I'll be on my way then. If I find any jam, I'll let you know. That would be great. Working with him when he is in such a bad mood is really not a pleasure. Go. I'm sure that will be delicious. Or not delicious. Doesn't matter what else I throw in, it's not going to get any better. One bottle. Empty. Not much water goes into the bottle, but it's better than nothing. Hmm. If I see properly, today's stodgy could prove to have a certain similarity with jam. Well, what do you know? I should really take part in a cooking competition. Delicious. I've got something here for you. Perhaps it will help improve your mood. It's... this is for me? Yes. You do like bread and jam, don't you? I made it myself, just for you. I... thank you very, very much. Mmm. Very interesting. You said you made it yourself. Yes, very interesting. And very delicious. Thank you. I really needed it. I'm feeling much better already. I'm very happy that you enjoyed it. Has it helped your mood a little? Yes. I owe you one. If I can ever return the favor... Then I'll get back to you. Maybe sooner than you think. Anytime. Hello. Are the good mood and the ability to concentrate back in gear? Yep. I'm doing much better. I know that this obsession with bread and jam doesn't exactly speak well for a reputable scientist. It's just one of my quirks. I simply need it now and then. Yeah, it's okay. We all have our weaknesses. Also, when some have a huge screw loose. What exactly do you do here? We are studying the regenerative capabilities of certain plants. Sounds very interesting. How does that work? The study? Yes. <sighs> We'll both be old and gray by the time I've explained it. Please don't misunderstand me, I don't think you are stupid. But you can't explain it in five minutes. No, that's fine. You're probably right. Would it disturb you very much if I watched you working? I find all of that absolutely fascinating. I also promise not to ask too many stupid questions, and not to interrupt. Alright, but don't touch anything. And if you have any questions, I'm sure Alexei will be happy to explain it to you. Thank you. That's very nice of you.
Are you the only scientists on board this train? No, not as far as I know. Apparently there are a few on board, but the compartments are separated from one another, and the doors are being guarded by soldiers. That's too bad. It would have been interesting to discuss research results among yourselves. Well, hopefully we'll have enough time for that later. You have no idea which of your other colleagues are on the train? No. The only person who has a complete list of the scientists and scientific researchers is Professor Sidorkin. I'll have to get my hands on this list. Then I'll know for sure if Dad is on the train or not, and exactly where I can find him. Who is this Sidorkin? Professor Sidorkin? He is my direct superior and the scientific director of the biologists. You don't know him? He's an absolute genius in his field. There's hardly anyone who knows more than he does in the field of molecular biology. Oh, that must have passed me by. Do you think I could talk with him for a moment? He's right next door. But if I were you, I wouldn't bother him right now. He's under a lot of stress and is extremely irritable. And when I say extremely irritable, I mean even more irritable than me when I have to go two weeks without bread and jam. Wow, that bad. Then I'll be careful. Why is he so irritable? There are a few problems, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. I have to go back to work now, if you'll excuse me. If I promise not to stand in the way and not to ask too many stupid questions, can I have a look around? Sure, but don't touch anything. I paid a bit of attention in physics, and I know that electricity comes out of there. I'm not putting my fingers in there. It's bad for my hairdo. Phew, that was close. I have only just saved humanity from the terrible Dr. Jekyll. Oh, thank you very much. Working with them is now so much more relaxed. I owe you one. So if you have any questions, I unfortunately can't tell you everything. I hope you understand that. Of course. I'm happy that I can see your work at all. A soldier who interests herself for science, that's not a daily occurrence, is it? No, and certainly not someone as pretty as you. Oh, thank you. What you're doing here looks incredibly complicated. Really? It's actually quite simple. These plant samples were exposed to radiation that is very similar to the radiation in the Tunguska region. At first the doses were kept rather low, and were then continually increased. I exposed the samples in that device over there to a flame with a constant temperature, and see what remains from the plant. You burn plants? Yes, you could say that. We are trying to determine which dosage of radiation no longer leads to the complete deterioration of the cell structure. Wow! I even understood that! Well, I deliberately left out two-thirds of the explanations. Wonderful. Once in my life, I'm proud of my scientific abilities, and you blow the whole illusion apart. I'm sorry. What exactly will you be doing at our destination? You mean in the research station? Yes, exactly. There. Scientific assistants also seem to be easy to question on an international level. So, it has to do with the research station. Maybe I can squeeze an odd secret or two out of him. What exactly is your task at the station? Unfortunately, I can't tell you that. Otherwise, the station wouldn't be a secret. So, it's secret, is it? Very good. Come on, boy, tell me more. Yes, I understand. But perhaps you can tell me something which isn't quite so secret. I have unfortunately little idea about biology and chemistry. But it certainly is fascinating, isn't it? I can only talk about what Dr. Lesniak and I are supposed to be doing there. Sure. A long time ago, they discovered that the plants in the region exhibit abnormal plant growth. It isn't a secret. It was all over the newspapers. Yes, of course. And now we are trying to influence this growth in a controlled manner. Fascinating. And what is the goal? Unfortunately, I can't say. But imagine if we could arbitrarily manipulate the growth of plants. That would solve the problem of world hunger in one fell swoop. Wow, that really does sound like a huge goal. Indeed. What I wanted to ask you was... Just a minute. If you can pester me with questions, then I can too. Oh, yes, of course. It's nothing personal. So, 
Why have so many soldiers been brought into a prohibited zone? Prohibited zone? Yes, in the research station and everything. I mean, with the materials and all the people here, you could wage a small war. Yes, well, I'm not allowed to talk about that. You scientists have your instructions, and unfortunately, we have ours. Ah, I understand. I willingly tell you everything about our experiments, and I have one little question and get an answer like that. I'm sorry. I would love to tell you everything I know, but that is very little anyway. It's nothing personal, but what I do know is top secret. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I'll be off then. Okay, see you later. Locked. Yeah? Excuse the interruption. Can I speak to you for a moment? As long as Dr. Lesniak doesn't have a successful breakthrough in his experiments, no. But... The train can blow up for all I care. I don't want to be disturbed. It's really... No! The door is secured with a huge padlock. Dr. Lesniak in an extremely good mood. A hundred watt bulb. That's a bit of healthy competition for the sun. If I switch on the light, the nice gentleman there may wake up. I'd better be very careful of him. Uh, which dumbass turned the light on? If I find out, I'll probably get another 15 years in the slammer. Oh well, he'll definitely calm down soon. At least, I hope he will. soldier's bag of medication. If I think about his description of the effects of castor oil, it makes me feel a little more than just queasy. So, I've got the bottle of castor oil. His dirty books and his smelly underwear I will very generously leave where it is. A very small bottle with a devastating effect. Well, I'm sure that owner will be able to spare it. I think I can say in all confidence that this will be a devastating success. I have just realized that I haven't eaten for ages. I should be careful that I don't inadvertently bite into that. I'm getting stomach cramps just thinking about it. Another bread and jam just for me. That's almost too much of a good thing. Thank you. Oh. I'm not feeling so well. I must have swallowed the jam and bread a little too quickly. Alexei, please continue working here and tell Sidorkin as soon as you have the right result. I've got to go somewhere fast. Very fast. A little liquid should be enough. It would look a little suspect if everything here were underwater. Damn! 
Why do the fuses have to choose to blow now? I have to go replace the fuses. Could you watch to make sure no one touches anything? Sure. No problem. Thanks. I'll take very special care that nobody touches a thing in here, apart from my good self. I'll take the sample out of the glass. I have no idea what sort of plant this is from. I don't know anything about those. I'd better keep my fingers to myself. I'll take the sample out of the glass. What am I going to do with it? I'll just put one inside the other. I can't think of anything else spontaneously. So hopefully the fuse doesn't blow on me again right away. And in the meantime, I really doubt if I will ever get any surprising result here. What? That can't be! Really? The sample didn't burn up completely? You can see that with the naked eye! I don't even need to do an analysis! I have to tell Dr. Lesniak! And maybe even Professor Sidorkin! This could actually be the big breakthrough! And I had almost stopped believing it would ever happen! And you are absolutely sure that all the test conditions were controlled and complied with? I always took random samples and rechecked everything. And I would put my hand into the fire to confirm Alexei's competence. I've worked with him for many years now. So you performed the experiments. Did you notice anything different? What kind of difference? We have to check everything exactly. If the results are correct, it's a sensation. But if we register it as a sensation, then we've made a mistake. And the most we'll get afterward is a job in a natural history museum. So go through everything again slowly. We should look at the analysis together. I only hope that we didn't miss anything. If the result is really correct, we'll go down in history. The gentlemen are certainly very enthusiastic about their discovery. I should use this chance to have a look around Sidorkin's office. There won't be much time until this Sidorkin comes back. I'll have a look around his desk first. Maybe I'll find the passenger list at least. The documents are entitled, Security Risks and Acute Threats to the Tunguska Project. I'll have a look at that, please. If I understand this correctly, in the last few years, several attacks have been carried out on official and secret research facilities. Documents were partly destroyed, but the culprits also do not seem to shy away from bomb attacks and arson either. Eyewitnesses report seeing men in black robes it has not been possible for the authorities to capture any of the perpetrators. Then the Secret Service FSB was entrusted with this matter, but has not been able to produce any solid results in their investigations. The assumption that this is the work of political terrorists could not be confirmed. That the attacks are being carried out by a religiously motivated sect is also being considered. I wonder if they are the same men in black robes that Eddie apparently saw and was babbling about. If all that's true, then Daddy has got bigger problems than I feared. It's huge! That's not normal. That must be genetically engineered. The piece of paper reads, place all documents in the safe each time you leave the room. Signed, W-I-L. If this safe has the employee list in it, then I should have a better look around here. Maybe I can find out exactly what is going on in Tunguska, and what Daddy's got to do with it. Some kind of scientific report about molecular biology. 
It's nearly all formulae, and those few words are just as incomprehensible. Tunguska Project. Error analysis is written on these files. 2000 to 2003 at the top, and at the bottom it begins with 2004. There's not very much I can do with these in the time I have. I thought so. The little toad is a snoop. I noticed you in Moscow at the train station, and not in a good way. Toads. Remain toads, even when they are wearing clothes. But don't worry. We're going to take care of you now. What is Kansky doing here in the middle of the night? Maybe I'm wrong, but I have a really bad feeling about him. I should definitely make sure he doesn't catch me. He probably hasn't forgotten the big bump on the back of his head yet. Finally, an answer to my question. I'm curious to see what my Irish colleague has found out. Hi, Max. It took a little while, but the information you wanted wasn't so easy to get. It was a good thing you sent me the original letter. But I'll tell you more later. For starters, let's talk about the Irish company and the letterhead. This company used to belong to a man named Ken Morangi, and had something to do with plant fertilizer. The company was suddenly closed down, even though business was going pretty good. I unfortunately couldn't find out anything more about it either. Since then, Morangi lives like a hermit on a small island on the coast of Ireland. I've attached a map along with the mail. But now to an even more interesting story. I took a closer look at the letter you sent me. It isn't as empty as it looks at first glance. It apparently uses some kind of invisible ink. Not very imaginative but it's apparently sufficient enough for people like you. Here are the contents of the letter. I hope you can understand it. Hello, Vladimir. Receive the documents. Copy is underway. We still have to settle the question of the handover. Ken, P.S. The whiskey is still waiting. Wow, that sure does sound mysterious. Maybe this Morangi knows something that could help us. I'd better tell Nina. I wonder what she's doing right now. Hopefully she's doing okay. I'm really worried about her. Damn. It is not my day today. First I sit with a bowel-sick psychopath in a train compartment, and now with a rabid dog. I've got to get out of here again quickly. As soon as we reach the next bigger village, they want to hand me over to the authorities. That would be the end of my search, and probably the end of me. There's a cuddly little lap dog in there playing with his little bone. Isn't he cute? A leather dog leash. A piece of bone. Before I get to that bone, the dog will be gnawing on mine. Locked. It shows when and how much the dog is to be fed every day. The dog seems to prefer the left half of the cage. There are a lot of pieces of meat in the box. I'll take myself a piece. Not to be confused with Jensen. According to the top display, the temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. The lower display shows a humidity of 28%. Metal pipe. A vacuum cleaner hose. Long, flexible, and boring. I can't open the flap, it's stuck. Oh, brother, there must be harder things to do. effects. I've already got a piece of meat. That will do for now. I can't say schnitzel as fast as he can swallow a steak.
take myself a piece. So, he should be busy for a while. I stick the flat side in the flap and then lever it open. There is a vacuum cleaner bag in there. I'll take it out. Do I have to rummage around in that? Yes, I suppose I probably do. A tuft of hair from... Uh, an animal. Pin, model number 08 slash 15. Above this hatch, freedom must be endless. No one heard that. Otherwise, my problems are about to increase. So, that pipe will never escape from me again. I could get onto the roof that way, as long as I don't slash an artery on those broken bits of glass. Close. Okay, let's try this again. If anyone has information about any scientists on board, then it is this Sidorkin guy. In his function as the scientific leader, he must have hidden the information somewhere. I thought Comrade Lenin went out of fashion years ago. It looks neither attractive nor very valuable. 
a solid wooden plinth. It looks neither attractive nor very valuable. The drawer is secured with a very simple, but unfortunately, a very effective lock. Open. A statue. If I didn't know better, I would say he's grinning at me. I'll take the skull with me, but I won't walk carrying a complete human skeleton. The statue has clicked into position. Skeletons must be some type of scientific status symbol. I can't explain it any other way, but every second doctor or professor has one standing in his office and even gives it a name. Oh, I can turn the statue, but I can't pick it up. It seems to be anchored to the plinth. Apparently, the right orientation of the statues triggered a secret mechanism. Soundproofed walls, and then this chair. Are they torturing people in here? There are restraints for hands and feet mounted onto this chair. Has someone been kept prisoner here? A book about the notorious pirate Bale Schmidt who initially made life very difficult for the patricians and later for the colonists near Port Royal. A book about the notor- Pretty. I can't see any handle or switch to open the flap with. Books about Sir Francis Drake, Blackbeard, Henry Morgan, William Kidd, Jack Rackham, all extremely pleasant folk who sailed under the flag of the skull and crossbones to liberate the seven seas from the plague of merchants. It sounds like a mechanism has been triggered, but I cannot see any changes. The mechanism in the bookshelf has opened the flap, but there is nothing in there. Strange. Very, very strange. Skeletons must be some type... Wow, that was close. I managed to survive an assassination attempt in my father's apartment and the guys from the Secret Service, only to be almost killed by a picture. Life can be strange, can't it? What sort of strange lock is that? If I understand this correctly, I should try turning all the lights off. Done. Hopefully the contents are worth the effort, and I eventually get to find out where Daddy is. Loads and loads of documents. This damn list of personnel has to be somewhere around. Ah, here. It is definitely divided up into scientists, military, and secret service. It lists more than a hundred names in the train alone, and well over 1,000 in the research station. What exactly are they all doing? Whatever it is, I've got to find out if Daddy is on board the train. Well then, let's see. After some of the names, there is a cross. Are they all dead? I can only hope that the marks have another meaning. Daddy's not on the list, though. Not on the train, and not at the research station, either. Does that calm me down or worry me? At least they haven't dragged him off to Russia. But therefore, my only good lead has cooled right down. I'll have to look at the other documents. Who knows? It might help a little further. Here is a file with the title 
Tunguska project. I ought to have a look at that. A whole load of formulae and loads of scientific stuff. I'll be old before I understand that. What? What's that? There is something written here about a Kalenkov report. It really does seem to be from Daddy. He proved in 1976 that the object found in the Tunguska region is of alien origin. On the strength of this report, the government gave the green light to the extension of the research station to carry out experiments on the fragment without any public interference. These experiments led to the discovery that it was possible to influence the behavior of animals when certain radiation fields are modified by the fragment. After that, the Tunguska project was called into life to improve the technology. Then there are pages and pages of test results. They must have done thousands of experiments on animals. Only, what is the goal? What are they promising themselves? Does it have any military use? Hope you have good news. What? And Nina? Is she okay? Damn it, how could that have happened? I thought you were gonna keep an eye on her. No, I don't want to calm down. I made that mistake once already, and the result... Yeah, okay. Where exactly? Okay, I'm on my way. So, if Sergei's information is correct, then this would have to be the military hospital where they brought Nina. I hope Nina is alright. How could a complete train derail? They think it was an attack, but for now we should not care about that. You have to get Nina out of there. Who, me? Yes. Alone you have a better chance of not being discovered. It was a miracle that we got this far without problems. I mean, I gave the research station an extra wide berth, but this close to it, I almost counted on being caught by the military. Okay, and so now, how do I get in there? Start thinking. Great. But thanks a lot anyway for the lift here. Without you, I would never have found it. No problem. It was a pleasure. You are pretty worried about Nina, aren't you? Yes. Hopefully nothing has happened to her. You really like her, don't you? Yes. Nothing that wonderful has ever happened to me before. Hey, wake up, boy. You can dream after you get Nina out of there. Yes, you're right. So, let's move. We don't have a lot of time. I'll wait here in case you need help somehow. Oh, don't forget. Nina has been traveling under the name of Perkova, and probably has been admitted under that name. And now, good luck. Thanks. I will probably need it too. Shopping bag made of cloth. What if something happens? Nothing is going to happen. I am going to wait here. And if the alarm sounds, Plan B will go into effect. And what is Plan B? I am going to think about that at the appropriate time. And now, make sure you get in there. A shopping bag made of cloth. There are small red berries hanging on that bush. My doctor always said I should eat more fruit. Well, maybe picking more fruit is a good start. I don't like him much, but nevertheless he is helping us. An intercom system. I always thought that such deserted regions didn't have electricity. Yeah? Um, what do I say now? Hello, I'm taking a vacation in the area and just happened to come by here. It looks wonderful. 
Is it very old, Shirley? Can I have a bit of a closer look at the house, please? What? I'm a great fan of buildings and architecture out of the Tsar period. Otherwise, everything's still okay, right? This is a hospital, not a museum. That doesn't matter. I only want to have a look at it. I won't need very long. There aren't very many interesting buildings around here for a tourist. It's not my fault you wanted to spend your vacation in the sticks. In any case, you can't come in here unless you're a doctor or about to die. Now leave me alone. I want to finish watching the soccer game. He switched off the intercom. All that stuff about the architecture tourist does not belong among my best ideas. I'll have to remember for the next time I'm in such a situation that art does not bring me very far. Now I've got a carrier bag full of holes and horrible red stains. Here, tie this around the hand with the missing fingers. Maybe we can fool the medic into thinking you've only just lost them, if he doesn't look too closely. Her cell phone is off. I just tried it a moment ago. And what if something happens? Nothing is going to happen. I am going to wait here, and if the alarm sounds, Plan B will go into effect. And what is Plan B? I am going to think about that at the appropriate time. And now, make sure you get in there. It really seems to be an ambulance. The writing on it is in Russian. I can't read it, but there's a phone number next to it. 03112. I hope my plan works. Hello. Uh, hello. My friend is badly hurt. I think he's lost a couple of fingers. Yes, I'm standing here at the bus stop in front of the hospital. Please, send someone out quickly. I think he's bleeding to death. Yes, but please, hurry. I now only hope that Oleg's acting qualities are sufficient enough to convince the ambulance driver of his story. I'm in the courtyard. Now I just have to find Nina. It seems to be a sewage pipe. It runs into the top floor. The lamp illuminates the cellar entrance. Empty syringes, soiled bandages, and a finger. I wonder if Oleg would... No, I'd better not. I'd rather not think about whose guts have been removed with these. Something is casting these shadows. Something very, very close. There's a key in the lamp! It's a strange hiding place, but better than putting it under the doormat. There's a key in the lamp! Because of the heat of the lamp, this key is really hot. I don't really want to touch it with my bare hands. It should work with that. The key out of the lamp. Do I have three wishes to be fulfilled? It fits. And into the lion's den. Hopefully no one's in the cellar. There's a whole load of medicines and chemical stuff in it. The labels on these bottles are all printed with chemical formulas. As long as I don't know what is in there, I'll leave them where they are. There are medical records in here, all sorted alphabetically. Maybe I can find out what they did to Nina. K... Koch... K... 
Kayo, Cam. No records on Nina. Wait, Oleg said she was traveling under a false name, something with P. Per. Perkova. So let's have a look. P. Pow. Per. Perez. Perez? Perez Manuel. Wasn't he the one who went on the Tunguska expedition with Nina's father? And he was here too? That's very interesting. I should have a look at that. If my rudimentary medical knowledge isn't fooling me, there's something here about extreme behavioral and consciousness disturbances. Perez's behavior obviously showed such strange symptoms unrecorded in any known illness. That was ages ago. In the meantime, research should have... It looks like they tried to find out about the illness by carrying out experiments on him. Through the cranium, without an anesthetic. That's ghastly. Electroshocks, straitjacket, shock therapy. That reads like a torture report out of the Middle Ages. But the poor guy seems to have survived it. Then, a few weeks ago, he was sent back to his home country after an application from a certain Dr. Nicole Charlois to a small suburb of San Cristobal, west of Havana. It looks like he obviously resisted so violently that they had to give him the double doses of phen... phenylcycladine piperidine. I believe that sedative has been forbidden for a while now. That's strange. Perez has been here for almost 30 years, and suddenly they're shipping him off to Cuba? And Nina's father disappears without a trace shortly thereafter. I would be astonished if there wasn't a connection. But what could it be? Quite honestly, I find the things ridiculous. It's probably broken, and that's why it's just sitting here. Dictation machine. Maybe there's a recording of Nina on it. Patient 1835, severe psychological and neuro problems, currently in a coma. During the observation period, the patient exhibited symptoms such as optical and acoustic hallucinations, reflexive muscle contractions, and incontinence. The patient also exhibited psychogenic reactions, temporary amnesia, partial facial paralysis, and spots in front of the eyes. Damage to the temporal lobe caused by external influences, fracture of the right wrist, various contusions, and hematomas in the area of the head and arms. Apart from some of the external injuries, the patient exhibits similar symptoms as the other patients. The report must be completed as soon as possible and faxed to Moscow. Damn, the batteries are running right down. That sounds terrible. What does, as with the other patients, mean? Does it mean that these behavioral and consciousness problems appear on a lot of people? If yes, why? What is the cause? I'll have to tell Nina about that, because something here is not right. I don't know what it is, but I definitely don't like it. Not at all. If I'm not mistaken, one of these bottles contains that stuff Perez was sedated with in it. I still can't identify the rest. Conditions like these would cause hospitals to shut down completely. At least I hope so. I don't really want to find out who or what is lying underneath it and where all these stains come from. Luckily, it can't be Nina. The person or thing is far too small. Ammonia. No idea what they use that for. Maybe as an alternative to smelling salts to bring someone back to consciousness? The bucket is full of blood. I think I'm gonna throw up. My doctor always uses a thing like that to listen to my lungs rattle. A syringe? Looks like it hasn't been used yet, although the needle's been uncovered. I'll have to be careful not to touch the needle. Still appears to be new and unused. I 
I cannot find anything in particular on the skull, but the lungs. I can't imagine that the person is still alive. I can hear voices. As long as I don't know what to expect on the other side, I'm not touching this door. My doctor always uses a thing like that to listen to my lungs rattle. Can't do anything about that, but you're missing out. It's a really good game. I just wish the satellite dish wasn't so sensitive. I have to keep adjusting it. Hopefully, it won't be as windy as yesterday. I couldn't really see anything properly. No, you can forget that. Just be happy that the broad is in a deep sleep at least and not constantly on a rampage. Yep, and three more days up in that damp room, then our doctors have more work to do. No, you better stay up there. There's hardly anyone here, but in case someone should surface, there'll be another uproar about people leaving posts and so on. Not to worry. The head physician won't even notice that I'm more occupied with the TV during my shift than with making rounds. I'm keeping an eye on the entrance. If he doesn't come crawling through the basement, I'll notice him in time no matter what. Yep, will do. Till then. And don't go hunting rats again. The doc is still sour about the bullet holes. A damp room somewhere on the upper floors. At least now I know where Nina is being held. But it's a little inconvenient that there are at least two guards there. I have got to get into contact with Nina somehow. Perhaps she's got an idea how to get rid of them. It doesn't look like a typical ambulance, more like a military vehicle. But what is it doing this far away from civilization? Hardly the newest model, but it fulfills its purpose. Don't believe that just walking in is a good idea. The stupid satellite dish needs adjusting again. The guard is desperately trying to readjust the satellite dish. If I attack the guard, he'll still be able to run from the room and raise an alarm. I shouldn't risk it. Apparently the guy has already readjusted the satellite dish. The guard is busy watching soccer on TV. Still, I better not go any further into the room because if he turns around, I'm dead meat. People should be working, not watching TV. Damn it! The stupid satellite dish needs adjusting again. I'd better not go there. As soon as the guard notices me, I'll have some huge problems. Either a live broadcast from the Antarctic, or the effects of adjusting the satellite dish. A heavy safety door. It only seems to open from one side. I'd better not go there. As soon as the guard notices me, I'll have some huge problems. 
I'd better not go there. As soon as the guard notices me, I'll have some huge problems. It seems to be a sewage pipe. It runs into the top floor. I can hear really loud snoring and groans, something about a train, explosions, and daddy. Now, wait a minute, that sounds like Nina. The pipe seems to lead into the room where she's being held. Nina, hey, wake up. Nina. No. Damn, she seems to be a heavy sleeper. She can't hear me. That penetrating smell might just take care of waking Nina up. Ugh, it stinks to hell down here now. That does not help me at all. Maybe the small ventilator is powerful enough to blow this ammonia stink into Nina's cell. Gotta be worth a try. Ugh, what a terrible smell. Doesn't that contravene all the rules of the Geneva Convention? I'm very happy that you're all right. Max? Who else? Or were you expecting someone special? To tell you the truth, I wasn't prepared for a surprise visit. I should tidy up a bit here first. And let some air in. Did you send me this revolting smell in here? Yes, there was no other way to wake you up. By the way, you snore and talk in your sleep. If you mention that to anyone at all, you are a dead man. Don't worry. But we have to get you out of there first. Good idea. Do you have a plan? Ah, uh, no. Not really. Then now is the time to come up with one. I'll get myself tidied up in the meantime. The fact that the hero rescues the princess and she looks like something the cat dragged in was never part of any story that I have read. That has seen better days. That one has had it. This chair leg is only made out of plastic, but I still can't break it off. That's pretty. My grandmother used to earn a living crocheting placemats like that. I would probably break my fingers trying. I can talk to Max through this pipe. That's pretty. My... It's broken out of the wall. The sweet smell of decomposition is the only reminder of what was once in here, whatever that might have been. And I lay on that thing. Ugh. The wall doesn't make a very solid impression. However, getting out of here would probably take days. Pull it once over this sharp edge and the work of many evenings goes to the dogs. Ooh, if my grandmother would see that. The thread is not all that strong if a part breaks off when I tie a knot. The stone seems to have hit the bottom. Now I can exchange a few smaller objects with Max. I'm not reaching in there.
Take that, scourge of every health authority. So now the last leg is off too. Don't you go walking away. A heavy safety door. It only seems to open from one side. The wedge seems to be keeping the door ajar. If I lock the guard in, he'll be a bit baffled for a while. After a few minutes, though, he'll sound the alarm. I've got to think of something. How am I going to silence the guy? I'll take the back of the syringe off. The needle and its attachment should then be light enough for me to use it as a dart in my blowpipe. An almost perfect South American blowpipe. If I lock the guard in, he'll be a bit baffled for a while. I've got to think of something. Phenylcyclidine piperidine, or PCP for short. That's the stuff they put poor old Perez out of action with. And if I touch this needle now, our little adventure will come to a pretty fast end. Crap! How did that happen? That guy is making a hell of a noise. I'll have to get him to shut up very quickly. I think that with such a hectic job, a little bit of peace won't hurt the guard. Ouch! What was that? So, I'm rid of him for now. A heavy safety door. It only seems to open from one side. I'll take the thumbtacks with me, but the bulletin board can stay where it is. A pin board with thousands of small notices, some instructions, naked women, telephone numbers. But nothing that brings me any further. Cheese soup. Theoretically very delicious, but theory and practical life are very often rather far apart. The soup is so watery that I'll lose most of it moving around and then I'll stink of cheese for the rest of my life. So, this is where the second guard is sitting. I almost landed in his lap. One more step and he'll notice me. I've got to think of something to distract him. There's no way I'll get past him. I've got to get rid of him somehow. Locked. A small piece of foam rubber. The sponge sucks itself full of soup. The soup is so watery that I'll lose most of it moving around and then I'll stink of cheese for the rest of my life.
I don't really want to know what is scrabbling around in there. I'm not reaching in there. Whatever it is in there, if it is attracted to the smell, it'll grab its prey and disappear. It doesn't make much sense really, does it? First of all, I need the bait before I construct any fiendish traps. The smell reminds me a bit of my ex-boyfriend. Whatever it is in there, if it is... Looks like it could work as a trap. Stress on the could. If it is really true that mice and rats like cheese, then this aromatic piece of foam rubber must be the perfect bait. The big game hunt can begin. Then let's have a look and see what we've caught. Run as fast as you can and keep the guard busy for as long as you can. Good luck. Just you wait, you little beast! I'll get you! Trying to get shot of the teacher at school didn't work this way, and it'll certainly not work here. I'll put this thumbtack under the cushion so that the guard doesn't get suspicious. Damn, that rat just slipped away from me. But wait, I'll get you next time. Ah! Spivak, you're a rat as well, but I'll get you too. All is quiet. I hope the dose was strong enough. A bunch of keys. It's the key that I found on the guard. I'm really happy to see you, and thanks for... My pleasure, noble princess. Come on now, we have to go. I'll just get my things together. Hopefully those guys haven't grabbed everything. Thanks, you two. I would hate to think what would have happened if you hadn't come along. You don't have to, but we wouldn't let you rot anywhere in the sticks. I knew that I could rely on you. Anytime. If I had to, then I would even... Could you postpone the niceties until later? We should get going. The people in the hospital are bound to notice your absence soon. Yeah, I'm ready. Although... What? We must be really close to where my father used to set up camp on his earlier expeditions. Am I right? Yes, that's true. But we really don't have any time for that. The hospital belongs to the Russian military. And when they sound the alarm, it will get extremely uncomfortable around here. We should first get out of here and think about how we want to proceed along the way. But... No buts. The risk of landing here in the first place was already big enough. We are going. Max, I need your help to get the airplane ready for liftoff. Oleg is right. We've got to get away from here first, and then we'll see what happens. Go on, get your things out of the jeep and come. Attention! Attention! An alarm has gone off in the neighboring military hospital. A female patient who is considered extremely dangerous has escaped. The military has been notified and several soldiers are on their way here. Until they arrive, no one is allowed to leave the airfield. Everyone is ordered to be on high alert. No one will be permitted to take off or land. Damn! They're looking for me already. What now? We'll meet here in a few hours!
hope you have good news. Unfortunately, no. Kalenkov is still missing. I'm waiting for the good news. Well, at least the others haven't found him yet either. We are running out of time. The preparations for the project are almost finished and everyone is waiting for you to finally find the missing piece of the puzzle. I'm doing my best. What should I do if... Concentrate on his past. Someone has to know about Kalinkov's research. And if he can't tell us a secret himself, then others will just have to do it for him. Hopefully Max and Oleg are all right. I suppose they weren't born yesterday. They'll get along with the soldiers somehow. And exactly how are we going to get away from here again, I don't yet know. We can brainstorm that later. In the meantime, I can try to find the camp from which my father started his expeditions. The thing is, where do I look? Apart from this tent, I have found no signs of human existence. Hopefully I can get some help here. It makes a very solid impression. It makes a very... A tomato ketchup sachet. With any luck, it may also have some natural ingredients in it. It's a pity that civilization has progressed even into deepest Russia. There will be everything one needs to survive in there. First aid? Only first aid for alcoholics. One bottle of vodka and nothing else. No bandages, no painkillers. Apart from the vodka, of course. I am not driving away from here until I have found out something at least that throws a little light on Daddy's kidnapping. A beautiful animal. Wouldn't it make a wonderful bedside rug? The fur is quite soft. It would definitely... Don't look at me like that, or I'll put my thoughts into action. The trough is empty. Clearly, nobody seems to take very good care of the animals. Through a small hole in the lid, you can see that it's almost full of water. A small plug stuck in the barrel. If I pull the plug on that barrel, its contents will seep into the ground. Sorry for simply barging in like this, but I'm looking for... Medicine. Parchment. Burnt. What? Which parchment? And what kind of medicine? I don't understand. The old guy seems to be in a kind of semi-conscious state. I'm not at all sure if he can even hear me. Obviously, he needs some kind of medication. I'll take a look around. A strange creature with its mouth open. It seems to be some type of nutcracker. No. The old guy obviously doesn't want me to take the statue. I'd better leave it here. A simple tin cup. The old man doesn't look very well. I'm not going to get any further on my own, and if he doesn't get his medicine soon... I have a different concept of sharp. One of those things comprising of three billion threats. They all look as if they are about to fall apart. I'll be very careful that... One of the threads has come loose. I don't need any more of them, so I'll leave the tassels where they are. This grill is rather rusty. The fireplace is already cold. The fire hasn't completely destroyed the parchment, but it is pretty charred and brittle. 
These bits of parchment have been so badly fire damaged that they'll fall apart if I pick them up. I'll have to restore them somehow. I need your help, old man. Me... Uh, sin. In his condition, I am hardly going to be able to talk to him. I'm afraid he's going to fall into a coma at any time. A simple wooden cooking spoon. A large case, probably for provisions. Too big, too heavy, and too useless. Then I'll get on with my favorite hobby and start destroying things. The tree is ancient. It must have survived the catastrophe undamaged. But that was a hundred years ago. Only the bark is flaking off. But that would happen to me after a century as well. A sharp stone. I definitely won't fell the tree with that. I'll limit myself to the bark. If I touch that stuff, I'll never get it off my hands again. A huge bit of bark. Poor animal is drinking as if there were no tomorrow. The scissors are so blunt that I'll only manage to tear some hairs out. The reindeer won't like that very much. A failed and abandoned attempt to plant and raise a tomato plant known to the biologist as Solanum lycopersicum. For others, love or paradise apple, a member of the nightshade family. What should I do with this drought victim? That stuff stinks. It looks and smells like there's sulfur coming out of there. I'm not putting my hand into that. I'll scald myself. I have no idea if it is under protection, but it is so pretty that I would really like to make an exception and leave it in one piece. I know, they're under the protection of nature conservation laws. I'll be very careful.
Not really the superlative in whetstones, but these scissors can't get any blunter. And how's that? It now cuts more than butter. Easy there, boy. I've tied the hair into a sort of ponytail. If I take the spoon, the hairs, and this thread, and I... Hey! It works! The resin is still runny enough to paint with. If I paint the resin very carefully over the parchment pieces... It worked! Five parts of the source of life, two parts of root of tears, one part blood of the night, Three parts drops of intoxication to be taken shortly before it unites with the wind. What effect it is supposed to have isn't noted, just as much as how to get each ingredient. The sulfur fumes have gone. Only that horrible smell is there. Hey, old man. Wake up. Is this the recipe for your medicine? It really does seem to be the recipe. The old guy wants me to prepare it in this vial. I'll have to hurry preparing his medicine. He's not going to hold out for much longer. The shepherd gave me the small vial. I believe he wants to have his medicine in there. Well, that must be the right doses, depending, of course, on the bulb being meant as the root of tears. No. The old guy obviously doesn't want me to take the statue. I'd better leave it here. The following ingredients are in the vial. Two parts, root of tears. A few drops of the intoxication. Ketchup is made of tomatoes. Tomatoes belong to the nightshade family. That could be the connection to the blood of the night reference. I'll try it. I should get all the ingredients together before I start cooking. The following ingredients are in the vial. One part, blood of the night. Three parts, drops of intoxication. Two parts, root of tears. Five parts from the source of life. Got it. Hopefully this witch's brew doesn't blow up in my face. I have no idea when the stuff is ready. But before it all evaporates... Evaporate? That's it. To be taken before it unites with the wind. Then the medicine must be finished. Drink, old man. 
I hope that helps. Thanks. My pleasure. What happened? A little difference of opinion with the guards. Guards? From the research station? Yes, I... Oh, it's not important. Not so important? You nearly died. But I'm alive. And you aren't just here to help me, are you? You have some questions. Yes. How did you know? Your eyes betray you. The eyes betray everyone. And your eyes. I know your eyes. They were here once a long time ago. Me? I was most certainly not. Yes, they were. But they weren't in the body of a young woman. You're the daughter of... What was his name again? Vladimir Kalenkow? You know my father? Yes, Vladimir was his name. He came to me back then, like you are today, with the same eyes. I need your help. If you knew my father, then you can also tell me what happened here all those years ago. I'm only a shepherd. I've always been a shepherd, and I will remain a shepherd for the rest of my life. But... I know my place in life. And you should know yours, too. Listen to the words of a simple man. My son didn't listen to me. What do you mean? You want to know what happened here almost 50 years ago, and what is happening here today. My son was also curious. He didn't want to listen to me. He found a strange piece of metal in the woods, and he asked questions. The wrong questions to the wrong people. I never saw him again. There are things that we are just not meant for. If we don't realize this... Old man, your words may be very wise, but my father is in danger and I need your help. I know. I can see it in your eyes. You really are just like your father. I also warned him, but he didn't want to listen to me either. He entered the cursed realm of the Ogdi. The evil thunderbirds that had been sent to cause endless sickness since the year of the great catastrophe. Your father ignored my warning, and his companion must have paid dearly for it. I know that I cannot stop you, so I will tell you where your father had his camp back then. Follow the northern path until you reach the swamps, and you will find what you are looking for. But always remember my words. Be careful in everything you do. Things happen here that no one can even begin to imagine. The Evan was right. The atmosphere here is real strange. So unreal. Even if perhaps a good portion of superstition is involved, I have a strange feeling here. And then the story with the Thunderbirds and the endless sickness. Pull yourself together, Nina. You're just exhausted. There are no Thunderbirds, and any phenomenon, no matter how mysterious, can be explained rationally. Hopefully... That must be the site that the old man spoke of. My father started his expeditions from here. Maybe I'll find an explanation here of how the events of the past link with the kidnapping of my father. An old rag. An eight millimeter film projector. Considering its age and the fact that it's not professionally handled here, it is not in bad condition. It won't work without electricity. The button must have a purpose. But what? Nothing happens. A small metal pin. There is nothing special to see, but then again, it is pitch black in there. The rag is soaked through. A 
I would never have dreamed that one day I would clean out a chimney from the inside. A saturated rag. The small windows are absolutely filthy. Inside, the windows are almost clean. As an obedient little housewife, of course I know what my duties are. There, finished. Shall I make dinner now as well? I should probably watch out where I'm stepping. One false step could be my last one. I know, the window is not completely clean yet, but that will have to do it for now. A generator, supplying the hut with power. There is obviously no more fuel in it. That would have been too good. A bit of petroleum still seems to be in there. It looks like a garden hose. Time has been gnawing away at it, but there don't seem to be any large cracks or holes in it. It is light enough here, and I don't want to waste any petroleum. Who knows if I'll need it again? If I remember correctly, then that thing has something to do with magnetism and producing electricity. Wow, what a monster. I have to ask, even if I'm talking to myself, how did that thing get here? That must be a tributary of the stony Tunguska. It's not the river's fault, but I'm starting to hate that name. This has been plundered. Everything that can be taken off and carried is gone. There are only two small nuts here, and I am having them. There still seems to be a bit of diesel oil in there. I've hung the hose into the tank. I'll light the lamp. Now that the suit is off, I can see numbers written on it. Seven and a half, three, ten and a half, six. A small bit of tinfoil. A bit of petroleum still seems to be in there. I've hung the hose into the tank. Hmm, there's still plenty of vodka in there. If I want the one spirit, I think I will have to get rid of the other. Nastarovia! Oops, I think I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> the rest of the diesel oil out of that old truck. That's what I call quality craftsmanship. Over 50 years old, and it still works like it did when it came out of the factory. If I remember correctly, then that thing has something to do with magnetism and producing electricity. 
I'll hold both nuts close to the coils, but not too close, otherwise I'll be toast. As a result, they seem to have become magnetized. The nut is magnetic. It's amazing what you can buy these days. There is no roll of film in there. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. That's strange. Obviously, the compass needle only moves when I press the button. I seem to have triggered a mechanism, but nothing has happened yet. secret compartment. There are a few old documents and a roll of film in there. I'll have a look at the documents. Maybe my father left them there. Yes, indeed. He describes that the 1958 expedition apparently could not provide an explanation why the plant growth has changed so much here since the catastrophe of 1908. The discovery of a meteorite, hoped for by the government as a cause of the devastating explosion, also did not materialize. For this reason, neither my father in his function as the leader of the expedition, nor the biologist, Ken Morangi, could provide an unambiguous conclusion, which obviously was not regarded favorably by the authorities. Oh, and they are also briefly mentioning Oleg here, but apparently he was not that important. Hmm, I guess I'd better not tell him that. Years later, in his function as a geologist, at the Academy of Sciences in Moscow. My father examined a strange piece of metal that had been found in the Tunguska region. He then was able to prove its non-terrestrial origins, which breathed new life into the meteorite theory. However, upon further analysis, he and his colleague Manuel Perez discovered traces that indicated that the metal had been worked. When they wanted to publish their discovery in the Kalenkov expert, it was completely, surprisingly rejected, and they were forbidden any further examination of the rock. When my father continued to inquire about the happenings in the Tunguska region, he was dismissed from the Academy of Sciences. The last entries are from 1977. Obviously, he and Manuel Perez went to the Tunguska region on their own. They hoped to find additional fragments of that strange material so they could continue their studies. What the goal was and what happened isn't written down in here. In addition, I have this burning desire to know what is going on with this fragment. On the one hand, it's probably not of terrestrial origin, but on the other hand, it was processed. That would mean the old Evink also said something about his son finding some metal fragment in the woods and then suddenly disappearing. That would fit in with the fact that my father was even thrown out of the Academy of Sciences due to his analysis. I hope that I will find some more answers on that roll of film. Damn, the bulb has burned out. It's not possible to just pop around to the shops and get another around this place. So now is the time to think of something else.
the sunlight makes the hut look a little friendlier at least. Are shards always broken, or are there whole shards? An interesting question. I'll have to ask my former philosophy professor. Are shards always broken? I've wrapped the tinfoil around the broken glass. Yep, that should work. Since it's rather dark in here, the light reflected by my modified glass shard should do it. So, Manuel, the camera's rolling. Please excuse me for a moment. I'll be right back. Manuel! Manuel! Or sheet lightning? And what happened to this Manuel Perez? That sounded like an explosion. I should see what's going on. Looks as if half the station exploded. Come on! Come on! Move your asses! The intruders have to be around here somewhere. We'll get them. Spread out! Oh, my head. What was that? Feels like someone sifted through my thoughts. There's someone up there! Get them! Damn. I have to get away from here. That was close. No problem. I told you that I would catch you if you were ever standing on the edge of a precipice. What happened? We just saw that some areas of the research station were in flames, and suddenly there were soldiers everywhere. I don't know much more either. Suddenly two strange figures appeared in front of me out of nowhere. From the FSB? No, they weren't agents. I'm not really sure. This may sound kind of stupid, but I'm not even sure if they were human. What? I... I don't know how I should describe it. It was more like a feeling that I got from them. What did they want? Did they say anything? They didn't really speak. It was more like... voices inside my head. It was as if they were looking for an answer. What kind of answer? I don't know how to describe the feeling. It was as if my head was going to explode. I've never experienced pain like that. And then suddenly, I knew that I wanted to tell them everything. It was suddenly so clear. You told them everything? No. Before I could say anything, the soldiers came and the two figures disappeared as suddenly as they appeared. Where are we flying to anyway? In the meantime, Sergei has found out that your father was never in Moscow. So it almost looks as if the entire trip was pretty much in vain. No, on the contrary. I'm now sure that my father was kidnapped for some reason that has to do with the Tunguska catastrophe. How come? I found some of my father's old documents. If I haven't misunderstood them, he was on the trail of something big. And I have a name. Manuel Perez. He was with my father back then. And we also know approximately where he is now. Yes, in a mental institution on Cuba. Great lead. It's gotta be worth a try. And there's another name on the list. 
This Irish biologist, Ken Morangi. That's right. I know that I have already asked a lot from you two, and I'm deeply indebted to you, and I would understand... Stop rambling. What's your plan? You're heading to Cuba and I'm heading to Ireland? You'd really do that? You can pay me back some other time. For example, by buying me a cup of hot coffee. Max, you're a sweetheart. And don't you ever forget it. Oleg, I'm not usually like that, but what should I do? Besides you two, I don't have anyone who could help me. And if my father... It's okay. We enjoy helping you, honestly. So don't worry about us. Concentrate on your dad. Yeah, okay. We already found the psychiatric hospital. I only hope that this Perez is still here. Why shouldn't he? But first I have to take care of some formalities. Will you be okay without me? Sure. I can manage the 20 yards to the reception desk by myself. Go on, I'll be all right. Okay, see you later. I wonder why such a small and remote psychiatric hospital needs a doorman, especially since there is no parking available here. Good afternoon. I'm looking for the sanatorium under the palms. Am I in the right place? Good afternoon to you, too. Yes, as far as the name is concerned, you're in the right place. As far as the name is concerned? Well, it's the same with institutions as it is with political parties. The name isn't always the main concern. How come? There are a bunch of palm trees here, aren't there? Sure, there are palm trees here. But let's leave it at that. I have already said too much. How can I help you? Oh, come on. What's going on here? What isn't right? Nothing. I mean everything. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. What do you want? That's a shame. I'm looking for a man named Manuel Perez. He's supposedly a patient here. Ah, yes. Could be. I don't know the patients. Go to reception on the left side. I'm sure someone can help you there. And if I can offer you a word of advice, be careful. What? Why? Just because. You look like you could use the warning, but be that as it may, I have to go back to my painting. Good luck. You paint during your shift? Yeah, sure. If there's nothing to do, I paint a couple of pictures. Some of them are then hung up in the clinic. Is there really that little to do? What do you think? We don't exactly have concerts or events where thousands of people line up the night before. I've been working here for two years, and you are... If I haven't miscounted, you are the third visitor. Oh. What do you usually paint? Everything, really. Although, if I have to be honest, everything isn't necessarily a lot. At some point, you just run out of ideas when you can only paint from one position. So far, I've painted lots of palm trees, blades of grass, and even butterflies in various positions. I'm starting to get sick of it. I paint extra slow, you know. I used to paint a picture in 30 minutes. Now I take 30 hours, just to postpone the problem of choosing the next subject for the picture. Well then, I wish you... what should I wish for? Wish that we have a thunderstorm. Maybe some of the palm trees will fall down, and then I would have something new to paint. Okay. Then I wish you have... a thunderstorm. Thanks. And if you happen to run across a great idea, then please let me know. A little while ago, you said that something wasn't right with this institution. Me? No, I never said that. But... The weather is beautiful today, isn't it? Yes, it's gorgeous. I understand. I'll leave you alone with your news now. Thanks. I'm still waiting for the kiss. From me or from the muse? Both. The future masterpieces of contemporary Cuban painting are created here. Whether they are justifiably rather unknown is something that others need to decide.
It's full of dirty laundry. No door handle, no keyhole. As soon as the door has closed, it cannot be opened from outside. So many loudspeakers for such a small inner courtyard? Ratatou, ratatati. Gone, gone is the balcony. The construction worker probably would be less than enthused if I take his toy away. He's just taking a break, completely atypical of a construction worker. Hello? Are you a member of the staff? Me? No, heaven forbid. I'm here to repave the courtyard with asphalt. But to do that, I have to r remove the old asphalt first. It's terribly hard work in this heat. I can tell you that. I can imagine. By the way, I'm Nina. Pleased to meet you. I'm B Bernard. Why is the courtyard being repaved? It still looks good. I've seen streets at home that look much worse. No idea. You're right, though. It really isn't w worthwhile for just a couple of patients. Whatever. I don't really care. Who hired you? Some Italian-American... Massimo Gattuso or something like that. Massimo Gattuso? Yes. He wants the courtyard to be finished in three days. It's completely unrealistic. But you don't know why this courtyard is supposed to be repaved? No. Strange. How come someone like Massimo Gartuzzo has the rear yard of a net house in a Cuban hick town surfaced with asphalt? Did you notice anything unusual about the Institute? What do you mean by unusual? A couple of menly challenge and a couple of doctors in a narrow room? At some point, it's difficult to differentiate between doctors and patients. I feel the same way about dog owners. But did you notice anything unusual? Apart from the fact that one of them is always screaming, screeching, or makes strange noises, truth be told, the Institute scares me a little. Can you describe it a little more? Uh, I don't know exactly. I just don't like it here. As soon as it gets dark, I make sure that I leave. And there isn't enough money in the world to get me to go in there. Someone like him, admitting just like that, that he is afraid, without having a real reason for it? I should be cautious if I want to continue looking around here. Regarding your break... Are you gonna deny me my break? Oh no, of course not. G good. It's short enough as it is. The old lady will start smoking again soon, and then my work starts again. Uh... What do you mean? The c cook. As soon as I see Black coming out of the ch chimney back there again, I have to go back to work. Smoke as a signal to get back to work? That somehow seems familiar to me. Don't you have a watch? No, nah, I don't need one. The old lady is accurate down to the last second. Do you know a man named Manuel Perez? Who's that? One of the people inside. A patient? Yes. No idea. I haven't had any c contact with them. It's prohibited by the management. You have a, um, a bit of a stutter. Am I correct to assume that it's caused by a childhood trauma? Or did your first girlfriend disappoint you? What tragic story is behind it? Have you ever worked ten hours with a jackhammer and then tried to speak halfway normal? Oh, no. Not that I know of. I th thought so. Otherwise, you wouldn't ask a question like that. Well, then enjoy the rest of your break. I will. Pile of wood.
it's full of dirty laundry. The writing says, caution. The management of this institution received reports that in recent times, strange figures in black robes were seen in the vicinity of the institution. Anyone who has seen something conspicuous or unusual is to report this immediately to the director of the institute. Dr. Charleroi. Figures in black robes? They really appear to follow me everywhere. I have to finally find out who they are and what they really want. Laundry service. Next pickup, Tuesday, 2.30 p.m. There are huge notches in it. It looks like somebody wildly attacked it with an axe. I hope I don't meet this someone. A braided onion rope. The food appears to have been tasty. The flies at least like it. The food appears... Small brass weights. A relatively small kitchen. It's obvious this hospital does not have all that many patients. Either that or they are all on a diet. Sausage tongs. A soup ladle. A bunch of fresh herbs and spices. A bunch of fresh... A relatively small kitchen. No wonder that many men harbor fantasies about nurses. There is a whole assortment of specialist journals from the Faculty of Definitive Relativity. I'll just take one of them with me. The selection is done according to the proven method of random chance. An invitation to a slideshow called Traditional Cigar Manufacturing Methods. Good afternoon. Hello. I'm looking for a man named Perez. Manuel Perez. He's supposed to be a patient here. May I speak with him? Perez? Yeah, he's here. And who are you? I am Nina Ca... Nina Castro. I think it would be better if I did not tell the whole world my name. As long as I don't know who's behind my father's kidnapping, it's better to be too careful than not enough. Sorry, you can't come in here without a special permit. But it's really important. Important? It's really important for me to keep my job and my health. And naturally, my incomparable good looks. That's what's really important. I'm not asking you to release him. I just want to talk to him for a second. Listen up, darling. Now that Mr. Gartuso has the say, and Nicole Charlois was put in charge, we all have to really watch ourselves. Massimo Gartuso? The American billionaire with a gigantic mobile phone company? That's the one. And in Cuba, the saying goes, whoever pays decides what's for dinner. Is there anything else I can do for you? The music sure is loud! Yeah, great, isn't it? I just got the disc and I've been listening to it non-stop for the last three days. It really keeps me going. It even makes it fun to clean. Actually, I wanted to be a dancer, but the market in this region is pretty saturated. So I had to invent a new discipline, rhythmic cleaning. I clean to the exact beat of the music. It also helps fight fatigue. I came up with it a few weeks ago and have been perfecting my technique ever since. We'll see. Maybe if politics doesn't pan out. I can maybe offer a few courses for housewives. I think the demand for it is probably pretty high. Yeah, uh, I bet it is. 
Massimo Cortuzzo has bought himself a mental asylum in a sleepy town in Cuba. Don't you find that a bit strange? I have my own theories, but I'd rather keep them to myself. Come on, it could be really important. Nothing is so important that a person could end up like... Yes? Nothing. Don't you think rhythmic cleaning would be a great business concept? There are so many weird things happening here that I don't know where I should start being astonished. I have the feeling that it has to do with something real big. Unfortunately, my feelings do not tell me what that is. Are you afraid of your boss? Me? Why should I? I just had the impression. It's misleading. It's definitely misleading. She does want to talk. All I have to do is tickle her a little bit. The boss isn't even here, so you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, that's also what Pedro thought, but then... And then? Nothing. Leave me alone. This Nicole Charlera is pressuring the workers to such a degree they are almost shitting their pants from fear. I hope I won't have to clash with her on top of everything else. You... you said something about if politics doesn't pan out, you're a politician? Not yet, and I stress the word yet. There is an election in two weeks and I want to run. As a politician? Yeah, sure. Anything against it? Uh, no, of course not. So you think you have a good chance? Yes, I think so. I am staggeringly gorgeous, and I have already, let's just say, convinced 20% of the voters. Oh, but I don't want to be just one of many. I want to be the next female mayor. Unfortunately, I still need some more votes for that, but I'll get them. If only I knew how to get them. Oh, you want to jump straight to being the mayor. How modest. What's your election platform? Platform? No one reads it anyway. The only problem is that I just have two weeks and I'm still behind 120 men. Yeah, that's cutting it close. Maybe you should try getting a platform after all. Oh, it's much too expensive and no one is interested anyway. I just have to be able to convince more people all at once and my qualifications is all. Yeah, well, do you have a better idea? I'll think about it. If I think of something, I'll let you know. Then I'll leave you to your hip swing again. Only the staff is allowed in here. They must have four to five diopters. The owner must be as blind as a bat and be bumping into everything at the moment. record by Toptic is on there. What a cool tune. Our Latin beauty probably would not be particularly happy if I simply turn her music off. Nice. This was probably a lot of work. He is so cute. In order to get to there, I would have to go through the house of cards, and then there would be a slaughter here. A copier. In order to get to there, he makes a curious impression with his teddy bear shirt. I don't know why, but he really scares me. Hello. That's a nice house of cards you're building there. Yeah. And now be quiet or the thing will fall again. This institution gives a somewhat, well, strange impression. Was it always like that? Could you tell me a bit about it? Maybe you've noted something in particular. Sure I can, but I won't. Otherwise I'll end up like, oh, it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Otherwise you'll end up like whom? Just like people who ask too many questions. Can I borrow the copier for a second? Sure. Bring down my house of cards, steal my glory, my pride, my last bit of self-respect. The spark of hope in my dreary routine, the little bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll just wait until you're finished. Nicole Charleroi. 
She's the director of the Institute here, right? Is, is, is she here? No, I don't think so. Whew. Don't scare me like that again. Are you afraid of her? Me? No, no, of course not. Shay was also never afraid. On the other hand, Shay also never had anything to do with psychopathic scientists. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. You look pretty determined. Are you getting money for this house of cards? Money? No, not money. Glory. I'll be like my ancestors and go down in history. As a house of cards builder? Yes. Shay started the same way. Shay? Shay Guevara? No. Chevrolet. Okay, okay, I understand. I'm going. Okay. I have to hurry anyway before the earthquake starts again. Earthquake? Yeah, every afternoon. Just before I finish the tallest house of cards in the world, an earthquake comes and ruins everything again. But this time, I'll make it. Watch out that your house of cards doesn't fall down. Yeah, make sure you don't bring down my house of cards. Small brass weights. The latest record by Toptic is on there. What a cool tune. Our Latin beauty probably would not be particularly happy if I simply turn her music off. No wonder that many men harbor fantasies about nurses. The record turns more slowly due to the weight. Still, sounds pretty good. No wonder that many men harbor fantasies about nurses. I'll pile the pieces of wood like I would have learned in the Girl Scouts, had I joined them. I knew that these kinds of pseudo-magazines could help in many situations. They must have four to five diopters. The owner must be as blind as a bat and be bumping into everything at the moment. It is really astonishing how the old tricks continue to work again and again. The fire is burning cheerfully. I can't even walk across hot coals, let alone reach into burning fires. Actually, I don't need any onions. I managed to get most men to start crying even without them. I think I will have to pull the coals out of the fire. Hard at work, I see. Well, anyone who works so hard is allowed to take a break once in a while. You're entitled. Isn't your break done? No, why? I thought as soon as smoke comes out of the chimney... If it's white smoke, that means the cook's still cooking. If it's black smoke, that the food is finished. And so is my break. Oh. Does the name Nicole Charlera mean anything to you? Not really. She's supposed to be the boss here. You must know her. Oh, her. Oh, g God. Keep her away from me. That bad? Worse. She seems nice at first, but she's something between a Valkyrie and a battle axe. Charming. You ask me. Am I supposed to lie to you? No. Have you gotten to know her? B believe me. It only takes a few seconds, and that's enough for me. Well, then enjoy the rest of your break. I will. Hello, what's your muse up to? Something that all women do, taking her time. 
the woman in charge. What is she really like? Miss Charleroi? No idea. I don't have any contact with her. She greets me when she arrives in the morning. I usually don't see her at night because she often stays in the institute until really late. Any peculiarities? Like I said, I almost never see her. Nurse Sabrina, what do you think of her? If I would tell you, you would say I was sexist. <laughs> yes, her assets are apparently very apparent. And otherwise? Otherwise, I unfortunately don't know her very well. Women of her caliber don't mess around with average-looking gatekeepers. You just have to convince her of your qualities. And those would be? Well, um, uh... Yeah, thanks for the chat. Could you perhaps paint a portrait of Nurse Sabrina? Yeah, I guess so. Just a second. I've run out of black. I can't paint without black. Okay, I'll take care of it. How long do you need? Probably half a day. You have 30 minutes. There's no way. I need at least three hours. Agreed. You have one hour. It's no wonder that contemporary painters have never been able to equal the masters if the artists are constantly rushed like this. At least Sabrina can't be rushed. A few minutes ago, she danced so fast that a portrait of her would have been completely impossible to do. But she has apparently put on a slower record, so it shouldn't be a problem anymore. Then you could start painting the portrait? Like I said, I can only paint Nurse Sabrina if I have black paint and a subject that isn't constantly jumping around. I'll leave you alone with your muse now. Thanks. I'm still waiting for the kiss. From me or from the muse? Both. I didn't find any black paint. Do you think a piece of coal will work too? Yes. Coal should work too. Do you have everything you need for the portrait now? Yes, I think so. She's a little hard to see from here, but I'll try. It looks great, considering it was painted in 60 minutes. I think I've outdone myself again. Don't you think? Yes, it's really nice. And her best features are emphasized perfectly. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I'll put the masterpiece in a bag for you so it doesn't get dirty. I'll leave you alone with your muse now. Thanks. I'm still waiting for the kiss. From me or from the muse? Both. I wonder that many men harbor fantasies about nurses. Look at this, what do you think? Oh, that's pretty. And the woman is a knockout. Oh, that's me. Oh, I always knew I was pretty, but so stunning. Yeah, and so modest. I thought you could use it as a campaign poster. Yeah, great idea. But one isn't enough, is it? Women, give them a hand and they'll rip off the whole arm. If I help you out with a few more pictures, you have to help me too, okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, and I also promise no new taxes. Exactly, and no one wants to build a wall. I can already see you could make a really good politician. I'll see if I can come up with a few more campaign posters. Then I'll leave you to your hip swing again. A run-of-the-mill plastic bag. No! The earthquake has begun. Nina, sometimes you are really bad. Only the staff is allowed in here. The vibrations caused by the jackhammer cause the house of cards to collapse. The poor guy will surely need them for his next attempt at the record.
I used up all the copier paper. That should be enough for a campaign to cover all of Cuba. This poster surely attracts many men, but whether they are then thinking about the mayoral elections remains to be seen. Hello, would you like to join my party? Or sign up for my rhythmic cleaning? I, uh, I need a little time to think about it. Okay, just let me know. Here are the campaign posters. There's no longer anything standing in the way of your political career. Beautiful, simply beautiful. Who could resist this woman? No one. Help me now. Sure, I've given you my word as a politician, haven't I? Will you help me anyway? Fine, just this once, but watch out for Ramon. He's the caretaker here, and if he finds you, he'll make mincemeat out of you. So hurry. Perez's cell is all the way at the end on the left. He is so cute! He looks like he crossed the threshold to madness a long time ago. There are noises coming from the cell that tell me I definitely do not want to go in there. Hello? Is someone there? Yes? Come on in. I promise you we will definitely have a lot of fun together. <laughs> uh, maybe next time. The door looks different than the other doors. Most likely it is not a cell, but the room for the caretaker, Ramon. I'd better not go in there, otherwise he will get me. The cell is empty? Is this supposed to be a joke? Or do the staff not know where their patients are at any given time? It looks like blood. Looks as if someone tried to break the tiles out of the wall in a certain pattern. But I just can't think what it is supposed to mean. Isn't there something stuck between the mattress and the frame? There is! A newspaper article. It deals with the new appointment for the post of institution director. Next to the article is a large photograph of that Nicole Charleroi. The mattress is full of yellow and red stains. I don't want to know what caused them. A camera has been mounted up there. Wonder if it works. Small grooves in the wall. Almost looks like scratches. There is something in one of the grooves. Those are fingernails! Sorry, may I disturb you again? But of course, darling, anytime. I could use a little distraction. Perez's cell is empty. Where is your patient? Empty? What do you mean empty? I mean empty. No one there, all gone, little going on there. In short, it's empty. That can't be. The doctor, she'll kill me. Does that mean you really don't know where Perez is? N no, I... Ramon? Yeah? Where is Perez? How come? He's not in his cell, so where is Perez? He's gone. I've already informed the doctor. She'll take care of it. Take care of it? Then will she take care of us too? I don't think so. She sounded really calm. Don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. I'm going to take care of the patient's beds here first. They need to be changed pretty badly. We'll talk after work, okay? Yeah, we should do that. Sorry, I didn't know. You heard for yourself. Oh, Lord, watch over us. Damn. I've flown thousands of miles just to find out that this Perez has disappeared. But I am not giving up that easily. I mean, he can't have dissolved into thin air. 
Is the camera in Manuel Perez's cell, is it turned on? I think so. Charlois mounted it, or more precisely, had it mounted. Is there anywhere to see what the camera has reported? Sure, it would certainly be possible in the control room. Can I look at it? No, I can't let anyone in. Come on, you owe me one. Sorry, I don't have a key. Only Ramon and the boss have keys. Then I'll leave you to your hip swing again. Hello, what's your muse up to? Something that all women do, taking her time. I've heard that a man named Manuel Perez supposedly disappeared from the institution. Really? I didn't notice a patient? Yes. Wouldn't you notice if someone disappeared here? Yes, actually I would. But I'm not here 24 hours a day. And isn't there a night shift? No, I don't think so. If you happen to see him, could you let me know? If I see him, I'll bring him back to the Institute. That was the official answer. Unofficially, yes, I will let you know. Thanks. I'll leave you alone with your muse now. Thanks. I'm still waiting for the kiss. From me or from the muse? Both. wall. A bunch of fresh herbs and spices. A long pointed meat fork. sense of propriety forbids any commentary on a skewered politician. If I manage to attach the canvas correctly, then hopefully the door will not close the next time. individual cells can be monitored from here. However, some of the monitors are only flickering. Some have been turned off altogether. The latest models. Wonder if they also were financed by this Massimo Gartuzo guy. An old furniture type safe. How am I supposed to unlock this lock? Maybe I'll find a clue to the correct combination somewhere in here. A one-legged pirate. He probably lost the other leg in a sea battle. A cat is sitting on his shoulders, and on the cat's head sits a parrot. And the painter immortalized a spider in the upper top corner. What a weird painting. How am I supposed to unlock this lock? Maybe I'll find a clue to the correct combination somewhere in here. 
One, four, two, eight. I wonder if the safe will open now. All right, I'm a genius. There are tapes in there with writing on them. A. Carlos, J. Sanchez, S. Martinez, M. Perez. Here it is. I hope that it will help me somehow. Manuel is written on this cassette. Maybe it can give some information on Perez's disappearance. I'm really eager to see what's on it. What are you doing here? I came to see if you're helping a patient escape. What... what do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. I... too bad. I don't actually like violence, but you leave me no choice. You'll go down before I do. No, wait! I don't want to rat you out. I just need to find Manuel Perez really badly. He's my only hope. Only hope? Perez was with my father on an expedition many years ago. Now my father disappeared without a trace. And I hope that Perez can help me find him. Manuel help someone? He's the one who needs to be helped. How come? Because he... Never mind. So you really don't want to hurt him? No, definitely not. Okay, I'll help you. Just don't tell anyone I did, otherwise I've had it. The doctor doesn't stand for any nonsense. The doctor doesn't seem to be the most fun person anyway. Why? You have no idea what they're doing with Perez here? No, how should I? He was brought here a few months ago at the request of a guy named Cartuso. He was also the one who put Charles Roy in charge. And then the horror began. Let me guess. Human experiments? Yeah? How did you know? That's not important right now. Do you know what the goals of these experiments are? No. It's probably because Manuel's disease is somehow special. Two other people were also flown in, but they disappeared again soon thereafter. It has to be about something big. In the last few months, they've invested nearly a million dollars in this asylum. Our salaries doubled in one fell swoop. The money isn't everything, and the price of a human life is too high, in my opinion. I wanted out sooner, but the boss said, whoever wants to get out now is gone forever. So I lost my confidence. I understand, but I need to find Perez badly. The longer it takes me to find my father, the greater the probability that he... Okay, I'll help you. Perez is hidden in a rock cave not very far from here. But you can't take him with you. I'll come in a couple of hours and take care of him. I know a lot of people here who will hide us. Agreed. Take care of yourself, okay? Yeah. You too. Poor guy is in a terrible shape. If he was not already close to being crazy when he was brought in, nobody would have been able to take the terrible treatment meted out by Charleroi without sustaining lasting damage. Are you Manuel Perez? <coughs> Hello? Can you understand me? I don't know if he understands me. But when I addressed him, he looked me in the eyes and smiled. Almost as if he recognized me. This event in the Tunguska region reacted the same way. Maybe he really did recognize somebody. Namely, my father. What did they do to you in the Institute? And more importantly, why? What did they want from you? <laughs> He appears to be afraid of the subject. He must have experienced some bad things in the hospital. I shouldn't torture him with it any further, even if it is important to me. My father disappeared. He was probably kidnapped. I take it that the reason he was kidnapped had something to do with his past. You worked with him for so many years. 
Do you know of anything that could, after so long a time, catch up to him? <coughs> it's obvious he wants to tell me something, but I have no idea what. What happened back then during the Tunguska expedition? Try to remember. It could be very important. <coughs> Either he can't remember anything, or he does not want to talk about it. The hiding place is relatively safe. Nevertheless, I hope that Ramon picks up Perez quickly and takes good care of him. Maybe Perez can put his thoughts down to paper somehow, since he obviously cannot express himself in words. It's worth a try. Perez threw some kind of symbol. I have no idea what it's supposed to mean, but it doesn't appear to be chaotic scribbling. The symbol can be recognized clearly and plainly, and the lines are so straight, as if they had been drawn with a ruler. Now the only question that remains is how that is going to help me. I'm going to send Max a text message and a picture of the symbol. Maybe he has an idea. Moranji must live here, somewhere nearby, if he's still alive. Hopefully the locals can help me. Tin advertising sign for an island sightseeing tour by boat. Definitely not by that weather, though. The top one is a sign denoting a speed limit of 30. The lower one warns of road damage. That is solidly anchored into the ground. The motorcycle I rented at the airport. idea what coat of arms that is. No idea what coat of arms that is. The daily menu is hanging there. There's nothing on it. Either the cook is sick or they're fasting at the moment. Oh, a full house? Maybe I should have made a reservation. Hello. Nice weather we're having today, isn't it? What? It's raining cats and dogs. They were supposed to be a joke. Yeah, real funny. Well, this should be fun. I'm looking for a man named Moranji. Good for you. What I meant to say was, can you tell me where I can find him? If you mean old Ken Moranji, he lives on this island. Island? How can I get there? Ask Folly. He's probably down by the water fishing. Do guests frequently fall asleep in the bar? Sure. But Klaus is particularly difficult. Because once he's asleep, it's hard to wake him up again. Is there a trick to it? Sure, if you stick something to eat in front of his nose. Then he'll wake up? If he likes it, then chances are he will. What does he like? He used to be a sailor. He doesn't eat anything but fish. But actually, I'm always happy when he falls asleep. Because then I don't have to sit with him and listen to the same sailor stories again and again. 
I would like a fish. Me too. Am I correct to assume that you are trying to tell me in your charming way that you don't have any? Yep. Not a lot going on here. Eh, it's okay. Do you always have so few guests? Some of my regulars are dead, and the walk-in customers aren't here yet. Walk-in customers? Truck drivers who are driving their goods to the markets in the neighboring villages. Every once in a while they stop, have three to twelve whiskeys, and then continue their journey. Three to twelve whiskeys? Yeah, that's what I said. And how often do they come by? Every day they bring fruit and vegetables. I really don't understand who needs that stuff when you can have liquid vegetables. Thanks for the friendly chat. My pleasure. The barkeeper is best friend. I don't want to deprive the barkeeper of his best friend. Nice and toasty. I could stand in front of it and dry my wet things. On the other hand, I probably have to leave right away anyway. So I might as well not bother. He looks really plastered. Hello? Are you alright? He doesn't appear to be overly communicative. Maybe I'll just let him sleep it off for now. A simple tin cup. I think I'll take that with me. It has obviously already fulfilled its function with a nice gentleman here. A key. Can I borrow the key for a second? No. Ah, oh, come on, just for five minutes. No! I obviously won't get very far with rhetoric here. I guess my only choice is action. Hello there. Why are you fishing in this weather? You don't have the first clue about fishing, do you? No, not really. Why? Because the fish bite the best in weather like this. You can see my bucket. That's my catch in just the last three hours. Even if I was able to catch 30 roast doves and wild pigs with apples in their mouths within three hours, I would never voluntarily sit outside in weather like this. I'm looking for a man named Marangi. Can you help me? Sure. Old Ken lives over there, on his island. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. How can I get there? Is there a ferry? Or a bridge? Nah, there aren't any bridges. And no ship is going to go out in this weather. Is that your boat over there? Yes. Can I borrow it for a second? Uh, I really don't need it at the moment. But perhaps you could do me a favor in return. Sure. What? My buddy Stefan visited me this morning and now I'm all out of whiskey again. Now I should get some for you? Why don't you just get some from the bar around the corner? Why don't you just swim to the island? Touche. So it's a trade-off. The whiskey for the boat? Yeah, that sounds fair. And that door in the cliff, do you know what's behind it? The cellar of old Stevie's pub. Is there any way to get in there? You have any idea how often I've tried that already? The cellar contains at least a year's supply of whiskey, but O'Brien, the old skinflint, keeps it under lock and key. He always says a barkeeper shouldn't give away his goods. We used to barter fish for whiskey, but one time a red herring got accidentally mixed in with the delivery. He's been pissed and grants something about industrial fish ever since, but the damage was minimal. In that case, tight lines. Thanks. That must be today's catch. You can't eat that many fish by yourself, can you? Are you worried about my health, or do you just want to scrounge up a fish? Well, to tell the truth. Go ahead and take one. I'm sure I'll catch a couple more. Oh, thank you very much. A stone. Exceptional characteristics? None. 
Nobody will miss it. There's a padlock on the door. Actually, he only needs to breathe into the water once. Then all the fish would swim to the surface. Drunk. Water from above, water from below. They are most definitely not going to die of thirst. I mean, I'm already wet, but I'm still not going to jump in there. It doesn't really look very seaworthy. On the other hand, a famous pirate by the name of Kinzel or something like that sailed the entire Caribbean in a boat like this. To simply throw the fish into the fireplace like that neither makes sense, nor would I make the barkeeper very happy. Whatever I do with this fish, I'll have to do it quickly. It's beginning to pong a bit. I'm gonna use your fireplace to grill the fish. Of course, you could probably do it a lot better than I can, but you probably have more important things to do. Um, yes, of course. Go right ahead. and toasty. The fish is on the metal shield, ready to be served. The metal is much too hot. The water is completely evaporated. There's only a layer of salt left over. I know that you have a lot to do, but can I bother you again? If you have to, yes. How can I get into the cellar? Take the key, unlock the door, and go in. Anyone can do it. Even people like you, if you have the right key. Now, you're a real comedian, aren't you? Yup. I need a bottle of whiskey. How much? For you? One thousand. I probably shouldn't ask which currency. I probably won't like the answer. No. Don't you want to do business? Sure. One thousand is good business. It's a little too expensive, don't you think? A special reduced price, just for my friends. For some incomprehensible reason, oh. my potential towards aggression is skyrocketing. If I don't pull myself together, I might do something I regret. Thanks for the friendly chat. My pleasure. The metal is much too hot. The flag is made of some sort of plastic, and it's probably going to burn up really quick. No idea what coat of arms that is. I covered the traffic sign with the flag. The flag is soaking wet. The fish is on the metal shield, ready to be served. Dinner is served, my lord. Fish? I smell fish. What? Lemon's missing. Barkeep, bring me some lemon. Fish without lemon 
is like a bottle without whiskey. Barkeep! Hello. I know that you have a lot to do, but can I bother you again? If you have to, yes. You probably don't have any lemons, right? My compliments. You learn fast. Well, what else can I do? For Klaus? Yes, he won't eat his fish without lemon. Bring me one, and I may even cut it for you. You're my hero. Thanks for the friendly chat. My pleasure. Here comes the truck with the goods for the market. Maybe he'll stop. You can have the company you want. Oh, the truck driver appears to be new. He doesn't know his route and can't read any road signs. Oh, kids these days. I hope nothing bad has happened. I should probably check on the driver. I'm in luck. The truck driver appears to have made the turn. I would have never forgiven myself if something had happened to him. A box full of fruits and vegetables. The truck must have lost it when he started to skid here. Only healthy stuff. Man, I'm lucky. It even includes a lemon. Here, you can give it to your eloquent guest, if your valuable time allows it. Oh, he will definitely be pleased, and hopefully, then he'll shut his mouth for a while. Here's your lemon. It's about time. Come and join me. Never expect thanks for anything. If I do it quickly and unobtrusively, hopefully the barkeeper won't notice. Let's see if he tastes the difference. Man. Klaus, watching you eat this whole time is making me hungry. I'm gonna go grab some whiskey. It looks as if he actually noticed the difference. I don't want to deprive the barkeeper of his best friend. One thing's for sure, this action is a key scene in this little adventure. torch. Either this is a distillery or the customers here are very, very thirsty. A few full and a couple of empty bottles. They're probably being filled from the whiskey barrels. I pinched my finger in one of these when I was younger.
Is the offer with the boat and the whiskey still good? Sure. Then I have something for you. Thanks. It won't last very long. But I wanted to head out in a while anyway. I'll just take off as soon as the bottle is empty. Please just tie the boat back up once you're done with it. Sure, no problem. And thanks a lot. You've helped me more than you can imagine. You too. Everything here is completely overgrown and looks rather run down. I wonder if Morangi still really lives here. Hello? Hello? Is someone there? Help me! What are you doing down there? They locked me in down here. Please help me and get me out of here. Sure. But, but how? No idea. Think of something. But I've sprained my ankle and I'm not 30 anymore. So don't just throw me a rope. I never managed to be able to climb one back when I was in school. Is there a ladder here somewhere? I'm afraid not. But there's a door down here that I can't open. Maybe you can find a way to open it from the outside. Sure, no problem. How can I get to that door? You're going to laugh, but I have no idea. I've never been down here before. And I have no idea how to get to the well from the castle. There must be a secret passage or something like that somewhere. You're Ken Morangi, aren't you? Yes, I'm Lord Morangi. Why? If you live here, you should know your way around here, shouldn't you? Well, I always thought that too. Okay, I'll take a look around. Thanks a lot. The injured Morangi is sitting down there, waiting for me to finally free him from his prison. I probably have to be a knight of the round table to pull the sword from the stone. I'll give it a try. Maybe I was King Arthur in a previous life. Oh, that surprises me a little bit. Old and already slightly moldy window shutter. Yikes. I only wanted to close the window shutter, and already I'm holding the whole thing in my hand. This place really needs a major overhaul. It almost looks as if the chimney has a helmet on it. The candle has burned down almost completely. A real torture chamber? I think something like this in a museum is really amusing. But when I look around here and imagine that people really were tortured to death here, I don't find it so funny anymore. Mood decoration. I really hope that it is only decoration. They were probably used to chain up prisoners in earlier times. It's obvious why that thing is called the Iron Maiden. The thorns are so sharp, I wouldn't touch them voluntarily either. Ideal for people whose height to weight ratio does not correspond to today's ideal of beauty. I'm actually quite happy with my figure as it is at the moment. The coals are cold. I don't want to imagine what these used to be used for in the torture chamber. This 
statue, most probably one of the Morangis. The statue is massive and cannot be moved. Pictures of landscapes. If I'm correct, the scenery around the castle could have served as the setting. So, what do we have here? Knee socks? Long underwear. Nothing here that I might covet from the owner. Oops, what's this? An absolute dream. I could get any woman with something like this. If only Nina were here. An absolute dream. I could get any woman. The pictures appear to be very old. It's quite possible that the land here looked like this a couple hundred years ago. A heavy curtain. Looks like it could be made of brocade. A passageway. There are a few steps down into a dark passage. It smells rather moldy. I wonder what's waiting for me down there. Typical Irish weather. Actually, one should simply stay in bed on days like these. I have no clue how I'm supposed to get through the bars. statue, most probably one of the Morangis. Centuries stuck in stone don't seem to have had any effect on the blade. It is still sharp, and there's not a spot of rust on it. What was that? Sounds like I accidentally triggered some kind of mechanism again. No clue how I'm supposed to get through the bars. There's a niche in the rock, but I can't see if there's something in it from here. Seems as if this fireplace has not had a fire burning in it for a long time. The painting is of Lord William Morangi, who lived here from 1270 to 1305. What an impressive guy. I ask myself why the chair is in the middle of the room. The painting is of Lord Will- This clock says quarter to seven. This obviously stopped running. That's funny. The pendulum is still moving. Small stool. Although the tips of the spears are very old and have already seen action, they are still pretty sharp. Most of the books don't really interest me, but here's a book about haunted castles. It talks about Morangi's castle. It says that there's a rumor that William Morangi, who lived from 1270 to 1305, was buried without the usual customs and traditions and they even refused to give him a funeral pyre. He was entombed in a sarcophagus wearing only a simple robe and his family's amulet. They say he's been walking through the castle and seeking revenge on intruders after midnight ever since. Even if I don't believe in ghost stories, I should probably finish rescuing Morangi from the well before midnight. The 
chain moved a bit. I think I'd better release the lever again, otherwise the chandelier that's hanging from the chain will fall down. The chain moved a bit. I think I'd better release the lever again, otherwise the chandelier that's hanging from the chain will fall down. An old oil lamp. It seems to have plenty of oil in it, too. A really nice chandelier. This is the last resting place of one of Lord Morangi's ancestors. The coffin is made of massive stone. No chance. The torch is fastened to the wall. I won't be able to get it off there so easily. Hopefully the torch won't burn down too quickly. I've carefully jammed the coin in the tongs. I hope it won't get damaged. I think I'd better take the coin out of the fire again, otherwise the gold will flow into the forge. The tip easily penetrated the gold coin. I think I'd better not imagine how it would look if I were stuck between these thorns. Very pretty. Perhaps I should give it to Nina. It'll definitely suit her. Sounds like I triggered some kind of mechanism again. There's a niche in the rock, but I can't see if there's something in it from here. I'll pour lamp oil into the groove that goes once around the sarcophagus. Let's give good old Lord Morangi a well-earned cremation. Maybe the story about him being a ghost here is actually true because he wasn't given a suitable burial. suddenly get really cold in here, or is it just me? Did I just imagine that, or...? The coffin is made of massive stone. No chance. The opening appears to have been sealed with wax, the color of the sarcophagus. The fire melted the wax and made the opening visible. Please, row across the lake twice and already my arms are ready to fall off. I really should exercise more.
I don't think that the rain gutter was made for this amount of water. Anyway, it's just lying around here, in the way. A long, nailed-down wood board. The board is nailed down. This plank is extremely long. I can't walk around with it forever. Although the tips of the spears are very old and have already seen action, they are still pretty sharp. I've now wedged the spear tips into the vise without mutilating my fingers. The ultimate proof that one never ceases to learn in life. I'm getting nowhere with this board. At this length, I'd always be afraid of destroying something, or someone. I'm going to try to saw the board into a tolerable size with the tips of the spears. This plank is still very long, but now it's almost transportable. The previous cover for the chimney. Sounds like I triggered some kind of mechanism again. supposed to get through the bars. There's a small key in it. I have no clue how I'm supposed to get through the bars. A small key? What is it supposed to be for? The amulet is beautiful and decorated with symbols. The mortal remains of Lord William Morangi. Excuse me, Lord Morangi. I have to save one of your descendants. And I hope that your amulet will help me.
Sounds like I triggered some kind of mechanism again. This won't work. I need something else that can help me to attach the amulet to the chain. I pulled the wire through the small eyelet of the amulet. If I turn the other end of the wire into the chain, it should hold. Sounds like I triggered some kind of mechanism again. The door cannot be opened. It appears the ceiling is caved in here. This is how I could separate the two pieces that are wedged tightly. Sounds like I triggered some kind of mechanism again. You found a way. Thank you very much. Are you all right? I think so. But my left leg is killing me. Wait, I'll help you. That would be nice. I could barely make it to my office on my own. You'll have to admit, the story you just told me sounds a little unbelievable. First Vladimir's kidnapping, then a mysterious conspiracy, and then men in black robes. I... Uh... On the other hand, the story is so unbelievable that you can't be making it up. So you'll help us? Little Nina is in Cuba with Manuel Perez right now? Yes, she just sent a picture to my cell phone. I can't understand it, though. Maybe you'll have better luck. Yes. I've seen this symbol before. But it's been a long time. Vladimir contacted me out of the blue many years after our Tunguska expedition. He wrote in a mysterious letter that he had made a sensational discovery and needed my help. Several years earlier, he had examined a metallic fragment that had been found in the Tunguska region. You've probably never heard of the Kalenkov report, have you? Just in general. It has something to do with extraterrestrial material, right? Yes, but that's only half the truth. What do you mean? Manuel Perez, who wrote the report with Vladimir, discovered this exact symbol engraved on the surface of the fragment. You mean there were symbols on the fragment? Vladimir wasn't sure, since the surface was so severely damaged. During further investigation, he discovered something in the archives of the Academy of Science in Moscow. It was in a report about the research expeditions of an English scientist, who apparently discovered disc-shaped artifacts made of unknown material in 1947, during an expedition. This researcher, Evans was his name, described the same material properties that Vladimir had observed on the Tunguska fragment. That alone was a hot lead. But as soon as he saw a sketch Evans had made, it took his breath away. Why? Please continue. The artifact was covered with unfamiliar symbols. 
One of the symbols was the same symbol that Perez and Vladimir had discovered on the Tunguska fragment. Phew. Sounds exciting. Where did the discs come from? And where did this Evans guy find it? That's also what Vladimir wanted to know. But he couldn't find anything in the Moscow Academy's records. That is why he contacted me. Vladimir had found out that Evans had died recently, and his personal notes and journals were supposed to be auctioned off in London. He asked me to get the documents for him, since he couldn't leave Russia at that time. And did you get the documents? Where did this metal disc come from? I sent Vladimir an encoded copy of the journals. I still have the originals here. Really? Can I see them? Just a minute. They have to be here somewhere. Nina, I have news. Could this Morangi be of help to us? I have to say yes. Do you know about your father's expedition to China? To be more exact, to the Himalayas. Hmm. He took a lot of trips before my mother's death. It's possible that he was also in the Himalayas. Why? I think that he was looking for something there and maybe even found it. Maybe that's also the reason he disappeared. I don't get it. I'm going to send you a few things to your cell phone. You better get going right away. I'll meet you in your father's apartment. Nina still isn't here. I'll give her a call and see where she is. Oh, I have a voicemail message. That's probably Nina running a little late. This is Kansky. I really hope you're getting this message. We have to meet urgently. It's very important. I can't go into details at the moment. I think I'm being followed. I'll try to lose the guys and then go to the museum. Please hurry. I have reason to believe that you're in great danger. I have to go. Somebody's coming. I'll wait for you at the museum. What is Kansky doing here again? I didn't want to run into him again. On the other hand, the message sounded important. But what if it's a trap? I'll probably regret it, but maybe he really does have information that could help us. Nina isn't here yet, and the museum isn't that far away. So I'll just head over there. Yes? We've managed to track them. We know where the hideout is. Are you sure? The information is absolutely reliable. Very good. You must go there immediately. I'll tell Professor Charleroi that she should prepare the last phase of the project. Okay. Once I've found it, what will happen to the girl and her friend? Well, those two could actually be a problem. Take care of it. Oh my god, that's Konsky! I don't feel a pulse. He's dead. What have I gotten myself into? Kidnapping was bad enough, but murder? I should get out of here. Max Gruber. Yes. Get in, please. What's keeping Max? He should have already been here by now. Maybe he had a more pressing engagement. How come? What do you mean? You really don't know? Love really does make you blind. What? Think about it. Your father disappears. Max sits in the next office and says he didn't notice. He had his music. Who urged you to go home and wait for your father there? It was Max. So what? So what? Have you already forgotten that's where someone knocked you out? No, but... And then the attempt on the train. This has to have something to do with you or your father. That's clear, isn't it? Yes, but... Your father wasn't on board. And who knew you were on the train, other than us? I know that all sounds strange, but... Nina, wake up. I don't know who Max is working for or what he's up to, but he's playing some kind of evil game, and he's playing it at your expense. Do you think we should... Forget Max. I know you like him, but he was only using you. If we don't go now, he'll win the game, and your father will lose. Maybe you're right. So what do we do now? The trail to your father leads to the Himalayas. And at least we have parts from a travel journal by this... Evans. We should be able to use it to find the hidden caves of those mysterious mountain people. And then what? That won't bring my father back. I know. 
but I'm sure this strange alien artifact has something to do with your father's disappearance. I admit, we most likely won't find your father in the Himalayas, but at least we have another lead. Yeah, I know. It's just that I'm so very tired. Do you want to give up on your father? No, you're right. Let's go. are unknown. Without the exact information from Evan's report, no one would ever find their way up here. Let's hope that you are right. We are, you know, in the border area, and I really do not want to make the acquaintance of overly nervous border patrols. I'll stay at the entrance and keep an eye out. Let me know when you have found something. An excerpt from the travel journal of a certain Dr. Evans. My father considered getting these documents to be so important that he intentionally coded all documents that deal with the subject. A small round hole in the rock. A small round... It could come from a yak. For sure, without Oleg, I never would have found this cave. Pretty big rock. It's too heavy. I can't move it. The water is crystal clear and most likely ice cold. The poor guy must have fallen in there. I wonder if he was a member of my father's expedition. I can't reach it from here. lucky that there is another drain, otherwise the entire cave would probably be underwater already. The bag was next to the skeleton, and the rising waters brought it to the surface. This means that the contents can't be that heavy. weird. Somehow unnatural. The bone caught on something. I can't get it out anymore. Patterns were chiseled into the rock here. I wonder what they mean. This room emanates a weird atmosphere. I can't describe it exactly. 
unreal, as if one is entering a different world. These lines and circles look almost like the sketches that Manuel Perez made in Cuba. Small humans flee from a huge unshapely object into a cave. The head was chiseled directly out of the massive rock face. It depicts the fall of a huge unshapely object. The broken down trees around the crash site remind me a bit of photos that I once saw of the Tunguska region after the 1908 catastrophe. An excerpt from the travel journal of a certain dog. strange disc. Really looks rather insignificant, but it feels warm, and I have the feeling as if some sort of weird energy is emanating from it. I'll show it to Oleg. Maybe he's got an idea about what we should do with it. Oleg! I was just coming to you! I see you really did it. Congratulations. We were not mistaken about you. Thanks. What do you mean by... I'll explain that later. The boss is waiting. Kambersky to station. Requesting permission to land. Ah, Oleg. I heard you actually found this metal thing? Hello, Sergei. Yes, everything actually went as we hoped. The girl was really good. Excellent work. The boss will be pleased. Now what are we going to do with her? The boss's orders were clear. Is that really necessary? Well, it is a shame with that cute ass. But with some luck, it'll keep fresh on ice. <laughs> and now, turn the water on. Okay. Nothing. What a piece of crap! The damn thing's broken again! Let's see what the problem is. We should hurry, though. The prototype is as good as ready for use. You see, and the boss is waiting for us. And the little one? We won't be gone long. We'll take care of her later. There's a piece missing here. Looks like it was torn out. Sabotage? Could be. You take care of it. I have to get back to our scientific genius. Okay. remember that Oleg knocked me out, but why? I really thought he was someone I could trust. Yet another bad judgment. This thing helps unclog stopped up toilets.
a video camera in the bathroom? I wouldn't want to take a shower in here. I can't reach it. A bathtub filled with bubbles, a glass of red wine, and someone to massage my back. I think I want to go home. There's no water coming out. Extra soft and fluffy three layers. A metal plate. A vice, standard equipment in any shop that has at least half the equipment it needs. A stationary drill. A metal bit is in it. It works! I'll take everything with me that is not on the trees by the time I count to three. Could be a kind of master key that can be replicated in the pork shop as needed. Could be a kind of master key that can be replicated in the pork shop as needed. A single egg is visible through the plate of glass. The machine can probably be opened with key commands. I do not know the number combination. And if I just simply break the glass, then the contents will probably be destroyed by the falling glass splinters. The door is locked. The lock is completely iced over. I can't get the key into it. A metal plate. A metal plate. A metal plate. The drill is throwing sparks when it gets in contact with the metal plate. The sparks from the drill set the paper on fire. In the back, a grip with rubber on it. In the front, a bent fork. Nice. What a strange design. I'm going to freeze to death pretty soon, but at least the key is nice and warm now. He is melting the ice, so the lock is now open. I assume that by entering numbers, one can extend a bridge to the room on the other side. I don't have the slightest clue what I should enter. And what happens if I enter the wrong combination too many times? I should look around for clues first. A freight elevator, but there doesn't appear to be a way to summon the elevator up from here. What a strange design. I think I read somewhere that stuff like this was used to protect sensitive equipment from radio interference. Oh, this appears to be something like a control room. And what is that down there? Problem solved? Not quite. But at least I found our saboteur. There was a terrible, regrettable accident just now. That's too bad. What's going on with the water? That 
isn't important right now. I need you here. Order. May I introduce you to Professor Charleroi, our scientific leader? Pleased to meet you. Yeah, sure. Save it. We don't have time. The boss will be here soon, and I want to have everything ready to go by then. Oleg Sergei and this Nicole Charleroi seem to be like a kind of complete assembly of all the human scum on Earth. Right now, I'm really tempted to jump through the window and send all three of them to... But what are they doing down there? And what kind of machine is that? I don't know for sure what is going on here, but I'm really sure that it is something quite nasty. And this I know. As soon as I get even the slightest chance, I will mess up their plans, but big. A huge plasma screen. None of them has a cassette inside. A single piece of explosive is still in there. I think I'll take it with me. It all looks terribly complicated, at least for someone who knows frighteningly little about it. There are 3,000 switches here and not one is labeled. I'm not even going to try it. A completely normal fishing rod without any kind of frills, but rather robust. I think that's a water pump. It's not running though. I assume it is responsible for the running water and the heating. That's probably why it's so cold in here. It's not making a sound. Something isn't right. I think that's a water pump. Nothing is happening. Maybe the switch is broken. The freight elevator does not appear to be very stable. One of the cables has already broken, and the one next to it doesn't look like it is going to last much longer either. The platform hangs too high. I can't reach the stuff. That's the way outside. I'm already freezing my butt off in here, and it's not going to be any warmer out there. Ten polar bears couldn't get me out of here while I'm wearing these clothes. A freight elevator. But there doesn't appear to be a way to summon the elevator up from here. Maybe I can pick up one of the lighter packs. Winter clothing, that's a nice catch. Much better already. Terry cloth bedding, a whole stack of it. Whatever am I supposed to do with it? Form hangs too high. I can't reach the stuff. How am I supposed to get across? Fly? Salt. Probably from the bag up there. That little bit is just enough for a breakfast egg. Somebody please tell me that I'm dreaming. Nobody is ever going to find me here. I can forget about that. A 10 liter bucket.
Wow, an old whaling ship, completely enclosed in ice. I wonder how long that has been here. A stationary harpoon. The things have an enormous penetrative ability and a relatively large operational range. What am I supposed to fire at? I haven't really been able to find that many real potential targets here yet. It contains whale oil. People also used to use it as lamp oil and lubricant. It's a little heavy. Not even female Russian shot putters can carry that. The jacket is frozen stiff, but it appears that there is still something in the side pocket. The bedding has soaked up fish oil. It is beastly heavy and stinks like one too. seems to be sitting on something. He's probably hatching something. A warning sign. Caution. Precipice. There's someone lying there. Hello? Are you hurt? Hello? I almost fear that he's dead. Funny that someone should fall into the glacier's precipice who probably knows his way around here. Plus, there was a warning sign. Just a moment. It could, of course, be that he had a little help when he fell. I believe these people here are capable of that. The shield was stuck in there. It appears that it even triggered a small avalanche, but it didn't appear to bother the penguin. I know that robbing dead bodies is frowned upon in upper circles, but I cannot do anything for him anymore. He, however, could perhaps still be helpful. In an abstract sort of way, the amulet represents a head. There is a large diamond on top. It looks to be very old, and if the diamond is real, it is worth a fortune. A gasoline lighter. Unfortunately, there is no gas in it. A couple torn out pages. They're entitled, Research Journal of Nicole Charleroi. I don't think that this information will help me right now, but I might at least understand better how everything ties together. This goes down so deep, I can't even guess where the bottom is. In an abstract sort of way, the amulet represents a head. There is a large diamond on top. It looks to be very old, and if the diamond is real, it is worth a fortune.
I can't tear the glass out with a plunger. I'll just take it with me again. It always looks so simple in detective stories. Plunger on the glass, cut it with a diamond, and... It really is simple. I have no idea what animal this comes from. It's too large to be a chicken egg, but who knows what they are doing here in the station. I think they are capable of anything. I don't think it will contain any vodka, but in this cold, I would be happy with whiskey too. If I only could get this damned cork out of this bottle. So, hold the cork in style. I have a vague idea. You can do thread cutting with that. I know, a very risky assumption, but you can't win if you don't try. So I leave behind yet another trail of devastation. That would be enough for a lot of breakfast eggs. It appears as if there had been a hole in the ice at one time, but it has frozen over almost completely in the meantime. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get the hole open again with only my bare hands. Well, it will probably take some time until the salt has eaten its way through the ice. Lighter could serve as a blinker substitute and lead all in one. It's definitely worth a try. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get the hole open again with only my bare hands. I'm pretty sure I salt ate a huge hole into the ice. That was easier than I thought it would be. There are people who prefer to jump into ice holds at minus 300 degrees, but I am definitely not one of them. specimen of the genus fish. Maybe I can distract it with some fish. to be made of metal. Why is a part like this just lying around here? And why is the penguin trying to hatch it? It doesn't like it that I stole his offspring. I'll put the egg back down. I have enough enemies here as it is. At 
At least now the poor little guy has a real chance of seeing something come out of that egg. An egg-shaped thing made of metal. It fits, and the machine is also starting to work again. A bathtub filled with bubbles, a glass... It even reasonably fits into the drain. That should stop the water from draining. Yay! The tub is full. Woohoo! A video camera in the bathroom? I wouldn't want to take a shower in here. Too bad, actually. It was just about to get nice and warm. The water has frozen over pretty quickly. I hope that the ice will hold me. The camera has been screwed on tight, but at least I could remove the strap. video cassette from the surveillance camera in the bathroom. Oh, there is something else on the tape. A remainder of another recording. Looks like the room right next door. This Nicole Charleroi is having a discussion with a really elegantly dressed guy. Unfortunately, his back is to the camera. But I could swear that it's... What's going on down there? Yes, apart from a few small details, everything is ready. Thanks to the artifact, we were able to quickly bring the radiation fields to the desired level. So I was right. About the artifact? About you, Professor Charleroi. Your team has truly done magnificent work. And Sergei, Oleg, you also deserve a lot of praise. Thank you. It was an honor for us. But enough self-congratulations. We still have a lot to do. Mankind is waiting for us to relieve them from a few decisions. Massimo Gartuzzo? If he's involved in this, it must be a really big thing. And if he goes to the ends of the world just for this, then I'd rather not dwell on how big this thing is. Realistically, there are only two possibilities. Either I make sure there is a super big noise, or I die clandestinely, quietly, and unnoticed. And since I definitely do not feel like dying, I should think of something that makes a huge kaboom. Only I probably won't be able to do much by myself. I need help, and I need it fast. A couple torn out pages. They're entitled, Research Journal of Nicole Charleroi. I don't think that this information will help me right now, but I might at least understand better how everything ties together. A couple torn out, I don't.
two, five, one, three. Done it. I wonder what is waiting for me in that room over there. There is something in the close vicinity of the research station. Most likely an airplane. Maybe they can come and get me out of here. I just have to get their attention somehow. Full of fireworks. I think I'll take a couple with me. And probably the matches too. All of the equipment looks to be completely out of date. They obviously only invested in stuff that was absolutely necessary. There is something in the close vicinity of the research station. Most likely an airplane. Maybe they can come and get me out of here. I just have to get their attention somehow. Equipment for measuring and analysis. What exactly can one do with it? I haven't got the faintest idea. contains whale oil. People also used to use it as lamp oil and lubricant. Hopefully the fuses will work again if I pour the whale oil over them. Flares. I assume that they are used to mark the landing spot for helicopters and airplanes. statement from a man. They aren't our enemies. They want to help us. I've had my fill lately of people who allegedly want to help me. Yeah, I know. I'm really sorry about Oleg. How did you know? Later. These men have brought me here to... So you are in cahoots with them. They're the same guys who were seen in the museum by the janitor and the little girl when my father was kidnapped, right? Yes, and the sect did actually kidnap your father, but for his own protection. Don't worry. He's fine. For his protection? From people like you? You played me for a sucker and were working with these guys the entire time! No. When I got back from Ireland, the sect also kidnapped me. Then they explained how everything fits together. I've never seen these guys before that. You have to believe me. Do I? During his investigation into the Tunguska catastrophe, your father stumbled onto something that has to be kept secret at all costs. The sect has done everything it can to make sure this secret doesn't fall into the wrong hands. And what is that? The people believe that they are the offspring of aliens from outer space. Oh, God. And the Tunguska catastrophe was caused by a nuclear-powered interstellar spaceship that crashed while trying to rescue its last living survivors from Earth. Bullshit! Psst. Don't tell me you believe that. I don't know what I should believe anymore. Do you remember your encounter with the sect? In Tunguska? Yes. It was pretty weird. The fact is that in the summer of 1908, an unidentified object was annihilated in a detonation as powerful as a modern hydrogen bomb. But they found no crater and no remains. Then these strange fragments appeared years later. Your father examined them and discovered that they were made from materials that didn't come from Earth, but were processed. 
The Kalenkov report? Exactly. Then the military got a hold of the material, and your father was prohibited from doing any more research. When he and Manuel Perez took off again for the Tunguska region, Perez accidentally became a victim of an experiment that the military was conducting with the extraterrestrial object there. Your father realizes how dangerous the material is, but he continues to do research despite, or maybe because of it, until he comes across evidence of the Zopa, whose abandoned caves he discovers in China. There he discovers artifacts that consist of the same extraterrestrial material as the fragments from the Tunguska region. A strange connection, don't you think? And one of the artifacts is here now, delivered personally by Nina Kalenkov. The station belongs to a man named Massimo Gartuso. Have you ever heard his name before? Billionaire. Divorced three times. Devastatingly handsome. You can ask him for an autograph in a second. What? He's here. I saw him below in the station. Hopefully we aren't too late. He bought shares in all the telecommunication companies through middlemen and will soon control the entire mobile network. So what? Are you afraid that the prices per minute will go up? Be serious for a second, Nina. Don't you have any idea what they're planning here? Think about Perez's accident, the psychiatric clinic in Cuba, the French female scientist, and the Russians' animal experiments. Give me a hint. They are working on a technology that will manipulate thoughts. Oh, come on. First you come to me with, with these aliens, and now this? It sounds inconceivable, I know. But research into this technology is nothing new. As far as I know, no one has been successful yet. But with this extraterrestrial material... Do you think that Massimo Gartuso will go to so much trouble if the artifact was merely of value archaeologically? The sect believes that he is about to implement this technology. And you can imagine what will happen then. So, do you trust these people? More than I trust this Gartuso. And what are you planning to do? The sect will take care of detonating the transmitter, and we have to find a way to disrupt the experiment itself. Are you familiar with the layout in there? Is there maybe a control room or something like that? Sure. Follow me and try to be inconspicuous. Yes, sir. Oh, before I forget, I found your cell phone in the caves in China. I thought you'd probably need it. In case you want to call me after all this is finished. I know your number by heart. So, the elevator should be working again. But maybe we should wait until the sect members have detonated the antenna. And if not, we still have the element of surprise on our side. So you really want to go down there? Yes. Now let's go. Damn, what just happened? The elevator appears to still be working, as do some of the doors, but I can't open the other ones. Nina! Can you hear me? Just great. I have to get the doors open as soon as possible or we'll have a real problem. We've had more than enough of those already. Hopefully Nina will wait for me and won't do anything stupid. But if I know her, she probably will. Max doesn't seem to hear me through the door. Now what? Hopefully he'll get the door open again. But I can't really wait for him to do it. We have no time to lose. Maybe that elevator still works. Then I can look around a little downstairs. Someone took the knob that opens and closes the vent. There's just a rod left now. I can't open or close the valve with my bare hands. A radiator. The radiator feels cold. Someone took... The pipe is cold. I hear voices behind that door. As long as I don't have an army behind me, I really shouldn't go in there. What an enormous icicle. I can't break it loose. It's much too massive for that. There are two labels on it. Danger, explosive, and do not bring in contact with water. For such dangerous stuff, that that sure doesn't make a stable impression. In some places where the walls have cracked, the ice is visible behind the walls. We must therefore be below sea level. The sign warns that contact with water could trigger chemical reactions. 
The pain is so brittle that it crumbles just looking at it. The sign is riveted. An iron chain hanging in the middle of the room. No idea what that's good for. I threaded the rod. I can't open or close the valve with my bare hands. Hopefully the lid won't open. I now have more leverage from the pipe I stuck on it. The tube leads through the wall into the hallway. I should pay attention. As soon as the icicle begins to melt, it will swing across the room on the chain. My former teacher, Mr. Puetz, would say no one can force a round metal rod to rotate with a wrench. That's it then, the vent is open. The radiator is gurgling and is cold. I guess there isn't enough water in the pipes. If Max would have been able to open the door, he would be beside me right now. The door is shut. Hopefully Max will be able to open it again soon. One of the surveillance cameras. Hopefully Max is constantly checking the monitors in the control room. There's no flame lit in the heating unit? 
Well, then let's look for the right button that fires it up. So, that should have been it. The paint stuck to the silicone. With a little imagination, you can see the sign again. The peeled off paint from the shield is now on the silicone impression. The no water symbol can be made out halfway clearly. If my plan works and Max understands my clues, the heater will get warm, and so will the pipes with the icicle between them. When it melts and slides out of the pipes, it will hopefully push the vat from the shelf onto the floor. And as soon as the vat cover opens and the highly explosive chemical comes into contact with the ice on the floor, it will go kaboom. A great fuse. If I could somehow get out of here, I should close the valve again afterwards. Otherwise, this whole joint will blow with me and Max inside. Water? Heat? There's no water in the heating unit? I'll see if I can find a control unit for the water feed. I hope that was the right switch. Ah, damn it! Nina, look out! So I did hear right. The lady did actually manage to free herself. Well then, come along. The boss is already eagerly waiting to make your acquaintance. Ah, Miss Kalinkov. We finally meet in person. Please excuse my bad manners. I would have introduced myself much sooner, but as you can see, I'm under quite a bit of stress. Allow me to introduce myself, Massimo Gartuso. Kidnapping, aggravated assault, and whatever else you order to do. So you're considering that good form? No, but special circumstances unfortunately demand special measures. But since you are already here, may I offer you a front row seat for the world premiere? Thanks, but I'm not interested. Then you'll really be missing something. You will witness how my new marketing measures will lead humanity into a happier future. I can't wait. As you should. I'm sure you're familiar with it. You spend days thinking about which dress you should buy, and then you have a fight with your boyfriend about whether you should buy the red or the green couch. I don't need a couch, and certainly not a green one. I will relieve humanity from these problems in the future. Through brainwashing? I call it help in decision-making. It will not only save people a lot of trouble, but they will also have more time to concentrate on really important things. You have to admit, it's a truly noble gesture on my part. I have to admit, you're even sicker than I thought. All you care about is selling your products. You don't give a shit about the people. What a shame that you don't appreciate my plans. Don't worry, though. You won't be in the position to take offense. And now, if you'll please excuse me, I have to prepare for the first test run. And if I can offer you a word of advice, be happy that you will be allowed to witness this spectacle. It would be a shame if you couldn't enjoy your last hours on Earth, wouldn't it? It can't be much longer until the icicle slips from the pipe. I have to get out of here, fast! I really trusted that guy. How could I be so stupid? I would like... Quiet! Professor Charleroi has to concentrate. A loading crane. I see no way to operate the crane from down here. Max must be up there. Hopefully they haven't caught him yet. On first impression, she seems quite nice. But this is obviously utterly wrong. The entire project is being monitored and controlled from here. The committee of the friendly do-gooders probably does not want to include me in its ranks. Another one who has made a fool of me this entire time. I assume that he was Massimo's information source in Russia. Control displays appear to be important. I think I may have something you've been looking for. Oh, the part from the water pump? Thank you very much. 
We will reward you with a painless death. How friendly of you. Oleg, put that thing back in there quickly so that it's nice and warm again up in the station when we celebrate our triumph. Okay. You will watch our guest of honor. I don't think that our princess wants to run away, do you? No, of course not. It's terribly comfortable here. radiation here somewhere. If we don't get it under control quickly, we'll have to stop the experiment. I won't be able to get there unnoticed. What? Nina, what are you trying to say? I don't understand. Escape using the crane? We'll see if that goes well. But I don't have a better idea, so let's give it a shot. Good luck, Nina. It's getting warm up there. The champagne is being chilled. This means that there is nothing standing in the way of our party. The celebration will have to wait. We have some serious problems here. I was wrong about you, but Oleg was very convincing and... That's okay. I'm a man. I don't hold a grudge. Come on, we've got to get to the airplane. The people from the sector are probably already waiting for us. Nina's father tried for months to scientifically prove what had happened. However, he eventually gave up, knowing that there are some things that just can't be explained with formulas. Still, or perhaps because of that, a small film company is very interested in his story. After his encounter with the sect, Eddie the janitor immediately started attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings and has been sober ever since. He is using his striking voice doing voiceovers for goblins in video games. Lisa originally wanted to become a photographer, but she was unsuccessful due to the fact that she couldn't manage to change the batteries in the camera. Her new career as a bike courier also ended suddenly after just two hours and her first flat tire, because no one patched the tire for her. 
She is now selling magnetic microwave hamsters from a small stand in Berlin. When the police arrived at the museum, Kansky's body had disappeared. As Max realized when he saw the amulet, the commissioner was a member of the mysterious sect, which no one has heard from since their intervention in Antarctica. The sect's motives remain a mystery. Were their actions really for the benefit of mankind? And have they really disappeared? The sanitation worker noticed Nina's lie just in time and didn't quit his job. One week later, he actually did win the lottery, divorced his wife, and has lived happily ever since. Conductor Carpen's unpunctuality cost him his job. However, German Railways was thrilled to hire him. He now works the daily Hamburg-Bielefeld route. After another 2,376 cigarette breaks together, soldiers Romanova and Yushin decided to quit smoking. They now spend their time sticking nicotine patches to various areas on each other's bodies. However, rumors of an upcoming wedding could not be confirmed. Agents Fetisov and Radinkov left the Secret Service to open a boutique in Moscow that features tailor-made suits. None of the passengers died in the dramatic train wreck, which looked worse than it was. The scientists are still puzzling over the strange results of the plant analysis that Nina so brilliantly manipulated. The Doberman Pinscher took advantage of the opportunity to escape and is currently following in the footsteps of one of his ancestors and terrorizing the moors of England. Barkeeper O'Brien was hit by a drunken truck driver in front of his pub quit his job and has been teaching rhetoric at the University of Dublin. The fisherman's doctor urgently recommended he pay better attention to his health. He now only fishes when the sun is shining, in other words, twice a year, and has switched to drinking single malt scotch whiskey. Klaus lost his home when the pub closed. He wandered around homeless and without a goal for months until he finally discovered his purpose in life and a place to stay in the small German town of Geesthacht. He is now a game designer for graphic adventures. Fernando, the gatekeeper, is currently working on his latest series of paintings, the 1,000 extremely different growth stages of the date palm tree. Thanks to her untiring physical efforts, Sister Sabrina actually won the mayoral election. However, she had to resign nine months later to take care of her baby. Shortly after his efforts in the inner courtyard, Puyol, the patient, set the world record in building a house of cards. Since then, he has appeared in numerous TV talk shows, babbling nonsense and earning money hand over fist. However, we strongly oppose the extremely malicious insinuation that this career path is a general prerequisite for a career in television. Ramon builds strange figures out of shells based on Manuel Perez's even stranger drawings and sells them to tourists for exorbitant amounts of money. The villainous quartet was literally put on ice for a very long time. As a result, large-scale mind control continues to be reserved for a very popular, massively multiplayer online role-playing game. The contracts are signed and sealed. You can look forward to seeing your favorite characters again in Secret Files 2. Thanks? Yeah? Have I thanked you yet? No, I don't think so. Hmm, the plane must have an autopilot function. Camera's rolling. And I'd like to help you too. I don't need to go to bed anymore anyway, and I can always sleep when I'm dead, so... If I can do something for you... That's really nice. 
Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my line. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> you know the difference between me and you? I make this look good. Cut! Just because I'm filming a shitty film for some shitty people doesn't mean that I enjoy being an actor. I was not outstanding, and I was not exceptional. I was monumental. I was epochal. Camera's rolling. <laughs> Prop guy, please bring the fake iron bar this time. What a comedian. Camera's rolling. Hmm. If my eyes don't deceive me, the stodgy could now look a lot like... Cut! <laughs> I can't stand taking the train, sorry. Let's film the scene again. 